everyone, and welcome back to the Late Night Pokemon Card Livestream. That's right, it's your host, it's me, TCC, and we're back again to open up more Pokemon cards and talk about the hobby and show off all the CGC returns and PSA returns and slowly break these Eevee boxes. We've got three Eevee boxes. He says, you'll get true first someday, Sergimon. What? Mike Size says, Eddie Petty was first. Let's see what you guys were talking about. So it says, Eddie Petty was first, by the way. You win, Eddie Petty. We have Evos? That's right. There are Evos. They're back in stock, Mr. James. Go ahead and fix this. Fresh Evos. I'm very excited. So excited. Let's see what you guys are saying. Mr. Better be ready to cut some packs today. I love when people cut My Little Pony. Mr. only starts the stream when it benefits him. That We do the live stream every night at 12 a.m. This is the late night stream for adults. No kids allowed, except for the kids that are funny. PSA are very strict graders. That's true. I almost got zero tens at PSA. Man, they're too tough. What's up, my Pokey Hernando? Is that Alex's card in the thumbnail? Oh, this? Is it Alex's? It could be. Um, wow, this is a nice card. It graded 9.5, so it's a gem mint, and uh, I'm just so pleased with it in every way. You know, I showed off this Shuckle when he came back from PSA. PSA wouldn't grade him, so they shipped him back ungraded. And I showed it off on TikTok, and I got so many haters in the comment section who are like, who cares about your signature, bro? Bro, you're not special. <laughs> so a lot of people angry that I'm even trying to grade my own uh, signature, which is, uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to listen to that. Of course I want to get my signature graded. That's the coolest thing ever. I feel like um, at least as popular as the Rebecca girl from the Friday song. <laughs> Look, Mr. Edwin Acosta sold us this for store credit. And I'm trying to sell it for $4 over what he traded it to me for. Actually, I was supposed to give him $81 of store credit. That's what we agreed on. Thank you, Mr. Edwin Acosta. Edwin, I think that was a pretty good trade for you, don't you think? So I got to get that guy sold. He'll get sold some way or another. Haters going to hate. They're hating because they're not you. I know. Mister, can I buy that shuckle? Uh, I don't know what to do with the shuckle. He could go into an eBay auction. I'm not a big fan of eBay auctions, to tell you the truth. But, And besides that, I think pretty much only people in our community would bother buying this. So, yeah, I don't know what to do with it yet. He's so cool looking, though. Doesn't that look fancy? That looks so freaking fancy. I think that's my favorite card right now. I want to sign Mr. Card. That's right. We got to do, oh, I got to draw like a sexy outfit on the Wick card and send that into them to grade. You guys know what I'm talking about? Naughty Wick? Some of you guys don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it, is anyone here watching still an owner of the uh, Thick Wick drawings that I used to do? This was way back. That, it was like two years ago almost. There were these uh, Wick character cards from the Burning Shadows collection. And I would draw a sleeve and it was like a naughty sleeve that you would slide the card into and then you know she wouldn't look like she was wearing her typical outfit well anyways that was a long time ago maybe it's time for me to crack out a marker in a wick card and draw on the card for real and uh, send one of those off to grade do you think they would do that i think they would do that they're very raunchy says mike side wow look at this camera i actually hate that it's not perfectly centered can this just be perfectly centered put it like this <laughs> let's see perfectly centered as all things should be I grade this camera PSA 8. God, it's still leaning. Come on now. How's that? Oh, I like that. Okay, that's good. Trent says, bite it in. Oh, 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 oh. What the? The foot was falling over for the camera. You can't have the camera foot falling over. What the? Dude, this camera holder is so garbage. I can afford these $1,000 cards, but not a good stand for my camera. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god. Oh my god, I think the camera holder is breaking, guys. It's it's no longer holding together. The foot's falling down. Like it's not supposed to do that. Okay. Oh, I'm scared. Camera might fall over today. All right. <laughs> Biden administration's looking to fire Dr. Fauci. 
over leaked emails. He's a fraud and a liar. What did the Fauci email say? I need the signed Chuck card. Your cards aren't aligned with the center line on the table, noob. Get good, fool. You're trash, kid. <laughs> a UAP just landed in the White House. Have Kitty hold the camera. Mister, my mister, what has to be the most common card you get in packs not including energy? Uh, I don't know. Every pack has a reverse hollow, so that's pretty common. If you're talking about the uh, not-so-rare card that shows up in every set, each set has a different card. Like, for example, if you're opening up Shining Fate, you pull Al Creamy a lot. God damn it. Freaking Al Creamy. Trent says he essentially knew that COVID was engineered and not naturally occurring. Yeah, so I heard something along the lines of he may have known that the United States was funding the Wuhan lab, which is crazy. I mean, really think about this for a second, guys. The COVID outbreak came probably from that Wuhan lab. I mean, let's be honest. It's literally right there, and they researched COVID, and that's where the breakout started. So they're researching a COVID lab, lab that was funded during the Obama administration, and the outbreak occurs during a presidential election right after China stocks up on gold, and then they get Fauci's emails and an email leak, and it's obvious that he is aware that the Wuhan lab was funded. And the question is, did Mr. Fauci know that the Chinese were working on gain of function on the uh, on on coronavirus, which is the ability to make the the virus more transmittable, more dangerous? That's you know basically like a bio. You know, what do you call that? Bio weapon? Isn't that wild, guys? They're looking into this stuff right now. Really wild. Politics equals one, Pokey zero. That's right. Take that, Pokemon. Let's go jump into the uh, PayPal's and see if anyone wants to open Pokies tonight. No, actually, it's a really big story. It's very interesting. <laughs> Alex says, "Re, Mister, my Mister, what is your favorite Pokemon? Uh, I have a Dark Magneton First Edition, and that is my favorite by far. So, we have a pending order for Mister Luis Rodriguez. Luis, you've sent in a lot of orders that are pending. I'm just going to trust you on this one, okay? Because they do seem to clear, but just this one time, okay, Lewis? So I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and take care of your pending order so that we can get some cards opened. Oh, are the Pokemon Center different? Me, 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 me. How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another Pokemon card live stream. Please, mister, I want Shining Fates. Quick! Give Pokezonic all the free Shining Fates. Quick! What do we got? It's Ndidi. I call dibs on the energy. Here's Spinarak. And Bolton. All right, Mr. Luis Rodriguez. Now, I believe your cards did go out. So you should need a new bag. Why are they wasting taxpayer money creating pandemics? <laughs> all right, there we go. Ah, I wish they would spend my money on something else, like a doomsday device. All right, Louis Rodriguez. Yeah, I mean, that is a good question, though. Like, why are they researching it in the first place? I think the argument is going to be something like, oh, well, they were researching it in order to cure people of COVID uh, before a big outbreak can occur, right? But then again, it's kind of like, how were they researching it? I think that's the question everyone's wanting to know right now. How were they researching it? Look at this lovely Zation V for $85. He's so nice. We got this pricey Hidden Fates Fairy Energy for $75. Oh, there's a Blaine's Charizard back there. He's kind of cool. Here's a Mewtwo 9 for $55. That's not bad of a deal at all. You have to remember, the cost of grading this card is probably half the price already. Not bad. I just sold my Zation V 9.5 for 90 Did the price go up or something? Uh, did you sell them for 90? Quick, send them to me. Why were they doing it in China, though? Could they not just put taxpayer money to create jobs in the USA? It's a fair question. I have no clue, man. They're like, here you go, China. You research COVID, not us. I I just have no idea. Alex says, so that slab is going on TCC shelf, right, mister? It's not like I'm cornering the market. Hee <laughs> hee. Well, Alex, uh, I, I don't know what to do with it. I can tell you it's probably valued... I think a PSA 10 shuckle would be valued around maybe $100 for a straight 10. Now, this is gem mint. That's not the same as 10. But, I mean, I'm looking at it. 
And I remember selecting this card because I believed it was going to be grading 10 with PSA. That's why I selected it. So I don't, I don't really know what he's worth with the little signature, but it's very cool. Put in the large. People turn into a vegan to stop killing animals. Farmers have to kill more animals to earn more money for the meat because the meat will be lower money. Vegans? What? What's up, Asian Tim? Hope the delivered Charizard cut. Oh, right there, Tom Riddle says to have a scapegoat. Oh, <laughs> the conspiracy deepens. Hope the delivery Charizard comes with my chilling rains. Pokey day, adios, laws. The chat is flooding. Oh, baby. Why does that have a green label? So this card has my signature on it. And this is called a CGC qualified card. Uh, and it just means that it has a signature on it. That's all it means. But I can confirm right here in the video that it's my signature. So if you own this card, you can say, hey, I got a graded card with a TCC signature on it. It's a nice little thing, right? So this is not for sale for $100. I just want to be clear. Um, he probably goes for a little more than 100 but I don't really know how much people will want it for. Can you sign my Misty's favor? You'll send 100 No, don't send 100 I was just saying that. I was saying the, the shuckle by himself might be worth just around 100 like for example this slow bro uh the psa 10 first edition english version of them is like 200 so i'm because there's no japanese version for sale i'm setting this guy for 165 was well, probably very similar for the shuckle a psa 10 shuckle i don't know if there's any for sale in japanese uh why don't we go look let's go look real fast There are none. How about completed listings? There might be one from like a long time ago. Let's see. There are no completed listings of them either. Okay. So we really don't know what the price of the shuckle is because nobody's grading this guy. Just me. Isn't that weird? I'm like the only one. You'll send 169. <laughs> Alex is borderline stalker. Alex fanboy collector. What? Mr. Alex is literally your biggest fine. You're stacked for two. Why is it green? It's green because it's special. It's got a, a signature on it. All right, here's that Aerodactyl. Very nice. I'm a TCC signature connoisseur. Mr. Who else has limited edition Ruby coin? You won't like me when I'm green. It's Mike's side. Pokemon Center released special edition ETBs of Chilling Rain today. They have green labels. All right, green labels. Yeah, I heard about the uh, ETBs, by the way. I heard about it before I went off and went swimming in the lake. <laughs> we went kayaking, not swimming. Man, what a beautiful day. Can't wait for the water to really heat up. Apparently, the water gets up to like 80 degrees in the hottest days of the summer. So, we have an order from Mr. Sven Krill. He wants three NBA Don Russ. Do I have three? Oh, thank God I do. That's like bathwater temperature. I know. Well, it gets really hot in Missouri, which I always hated Missouri for that. However, now that I live next to a body of water, it's the best thing ever because the water is going to be very comfortable. So he would also like two of the evolutions. All right. Two 2015 evolutions. So... These evolution packs are pretty tough. They don't all have holographic cards in them. Man, speaking of which, I'm hot right now. Right, I was talking about... You know what? I think we have a fan in here. Where'd that remote go? Here it is. Look, I got a little remote. Let's turn the fan on. See how noisy the fan is, first of all. Oh, 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 that's too fast. <laughs> it's going to blow the cards away. All right. That's not too bad. That feels nice. Next set is a Dragon Focus set. I hope so. With Dragonite. Give us Dragonite, man. Do the stream from the lake. Now, I really have thought about doing that. But, you know, there's a lot of, like, sort of stuff supporting the stream. All the packs would need to be down there. The table would be need to be down there. Like, the table would be gone. Yeah, it would really be hard to do that stream from the uh, lake, okay? So that would be difficult. My neighbors would probably be annoyed as heck because, by the way, when you're out on that dock, 
everyone can hear you. Even from across the lake, they can hear you. And then the worst part is, is I don't want to spill any trash into the lake at all. The lake should, you know, not have any Pokemon boosters in it. That would be silly. Okay, Mr. Sven. Come on, Sven. First pack is cold. Let's see if we can find a rare in the in the pack, though. Oh, here we are. So rare. And these are all commons. Yeah, so these are all commons. So you've got rare blue entertaining drill. Not very good. So the, these are kind of like the My Little Pony packs. Basically, some of the packs have hollows and some do not. And so you're lucky to pull a hollow. Here's Android Toss. Two packs and neither of them have hollows in them. I'm sorry, mister. But let me see if I can get you another nice looking card anyways. I don't know much about these characters, but I bet you Vegeta is popular. And okay, so that was a that was a cold round of the 2015 Evolution Packs. I encourage you guys to dig those up and find all the good ones, because once those are gone, I won't be refreshing those. I won't be offering them anymore. You heard it from me first. Fauci didn't kill himself. Oh, no. Isn't it wild? There was more information about Jeffrey Epstein that the guards actually... Wasn't there some information the guards admitted that they faked records or something? That came out recently. Why are there not huge protests in the street over the, the obvious killing of Jeffrey Epstein? Some powerful person or a couple powerful people said, no, nah, he's not going to throw any dirt on us. We're going to kill him before he can do that. And nobody's nobody's like, nobody's shutting any cities, out, cities down for that. That's a huge deal. We should know. Bong rip time. That's right. Fauci died. No, no, he's not saying that. He's saying, don't be surprised when Fauci disappears. Okay, we got Jamal, John, LeBron. It's LeBron James. They also were not prison guards. Because he did stuff to kids. No one going to care about him. They were workers forced into guard duty and compelled to work overtime. Huh, man. We got Luke, RJ. Here's Darius. Look at Darius. He's so nice. Fauci, I barely know her. But if there is a toilet paper shortage, everyone panics. What? We got Jaden and Caleb. Hmm, that's not LaMelo Ball. Pull LaMelo Ball. LeBron just lost. Oh, he just lost a match. That sucks. He's a bum. Mr. Better not talk about LeBron. Joe Harris, Lori, what's this? Is this going to be a... Oh! Congratulations, Mr. Picking Up a Signature Card. Wow, very hot. Who is this? Daniel Oturu. Congratulations. We also have... Cole Anthony, Precious, and Cole Anthony. Sweet! It's a rookie card. It's a rookie. It's an autograph. And we're hoping to pull two autographs out of that hobby box, the NFL Prisms, by the way. Can you say hi to me? Hi, how's it going, Caitlin? Okay, congratulations to Sven Krill. You pulled the autograph card. You know, I gotta say, we run into an awful lot of the jersey cards and not into a lot of signature cards. So I feel like the signature cards are more valuable. Sven, he says, I need a new bag. You got it, Sven. Welcome back, man. I am enjoying opening these sport cards. I feel like I've learned so much already. TCC, check out the newest dragon set on Poke Beach. Newest dragon set. Sven. Krill. If you got a Lamello signature, you get the biggest pokies. Well, I'm getting a pokey in my pants right now. Let's see. I gotta warn you guys, my computer appears to be running very slowly tonight. I do not know what's going on with my computer, but it probably needs to be restarted. Pokey Beach. Let's see what he's talking about real fast. There we go. Dragon Pokemon return to the TCG. Sky Stream and Towering Perfection revealed. Oh. Here's a Dragonite. Zoom in a little bit there. 
Appleton. <laughs> Shooting a little fire beam. You know, I didn't like Appleton at first, but he's actually pretty funny. I like to see him. Why, why should every dragon Pokemon look super powerful and crazy? It's okay for them to look goofy sometimes. Now, I actually do like Duraludon. I think he's kind of, he's got like this geometric design that I enjoy. What is this? He, he turns into a skyscraper. I love it. I, I knew that though from playing the game. All right. Well, not too much information other than the fact that we're going to have Rayquaza in the set. And uh, notably, here's Hydreigon. They really ought to give Hydreigon like a gold card or some wild thing because I like him a lot, but he never seems to get a really nice card. And here's Dragonite. He's old school. So is Rayquaza. I'm sure those will be very popular. Creatures has officially revealed Skystream and Towering Perfection. As posted before, they will release on July 9th. Each set will feature 67 cards before Secret Rares. Feature the return of Dragon-type Pokemon. They've been missing from the TCG since the start of Sword and Shield. They will not be weak to any type. While Creatures never started, Poke Dragon Pokemon were dead. Fairy has definitely been killed. Oh, oh, oh I see. So there's no Fairy-type anymore. That's right. I remember that. All right, cool, great news. Very cool. Let's see who's next. We have Arturo Perez. He wants one Opus 11 and one Eevee Heroes. Sounds good. One Opus 11 and one Eevee Heroes. We have only a little bit of Eevee Heroes tonight. So in the Final Fantasy Soldiers Return Pack, you can pull Sephiroth, Cloud, and even Tifa, and Tifa is probably the best pull in the set. Eevee Heroes, we're still learning things about Eevee Heroes. Of course, I could just get on Poke Lecter and see all the pulls for Eevee Heroes. I'm kind of enjoying not knowing. I might open some Eevee Heroes this weekend. Let's go ahead and fix this a little bit. I'm trying to get this camera just right. Okay, let's see. Cold Pack, holy. And Tifa, come on, Tifa. You got Lich, Edge, Dad, uh, Daluma, Fiona, oh my, and Shiva. All right. Sorry, Mr. Arturo Perez. No crazy pulls on that pack. It was just one pack, you know? It's hard to get a snipe, isn't it? If every pack was a snipe, nothing would be rare. Let's find your bag, Mr. Arturo. Now, do you need a new bag, actually? Keeping that eye on that shuckle. Arturo Perez. Hmm, not there. Oh, here we are. Mr. Arturo. Thank you very much, mister. I enjoy seeing those Final Fantasy cards. Okay. You know, I haven't been able to grade any of the Final Fantasy cards because around the time I was going to send some out, PSA shut down. And they're the only ones grading them. So we got to get those we got to get those Final Fantasy cards graded so we can show off how nice they look when they're done grading. All right, let's refresh. Does CGC really not do Final Fantasy? I feel like CGC should. Early, early stream. Well, the beginning of the stream. That's what I mean. Ardenan says, are you Pokey Famous? That's right. Tens of people know me. My mom, my dad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Kelby the Loon says, one NFL custom and one EV Heroes. You got it, Mr. Kelby. How's it going, Kelby? So here's your EV Heroes. Now, Kelby, I'm trying to remember. Where's Kelby's bag? Kelby's not just in the K box, is he? You pull Leafy on. All right. I don't feel like you're in the K box. What's up, Bradley Brewer? How's it going, mister? You miss a signed card, Eddie. All right. So, Kelby Daloon, Kira Nickel, Keith, Kevin, Kyle, Kurt, Kevin, Keith. All right. He's definitely not in here. Where have I seen Kelby Daloon? J. Manuel, John. I've definitely seen your bag around. Is that because he's over here? Joseph Gyron. 
That's Jonas Rosado. We got James Gower, R. Marquez, Ramiro. And back here is Relax and Louis Lana. Where did Louis Lana go? Reminds me of uh, Joe Diana. They got like a double husband wife name and then they buy a bunch of cars and then they disappear. Mr. Kelby, we'll find your bag tomorrow. Yakov, Ricardo. So then you must be in the overflow. Hope tonight goes the best. Just got home from camping. Glad to hear it, mister. Here we go, Kelby DeLoon. You're right here on the side. Very easy to find, in fact. Is it time to buy some Bitcoin? It's that time. The technical analysis says it's the time. Bye, bye, bye. Bradley Brewer says four packs of Japanese team up. All right. Welcome back, Mr. Bradley Brewer. One, two, three, four. Mr. I found my childhood cards today and I seen first edition Charizard. Can you, you show me an example of Shadowless so I know what to look for? Also afraid sending off such an expensive card thoughts. Well, your Charizard, if you really do have a first edition English Charizard, he already is Shadowless, okay? So uh, Shadowless means he's missing this shadow. There's a little shadow right here on this yellow box. Well, your Charizard won't have that. He'll just look smooth. There will be no darkness on that side of the of the card. Sneep. Have no fear. Send him to me, mister. <laughs> All right, you ready? This is for Bradley Brewer. Oh, my Lord. I got to tell you guys, I'm a huge fan of the Team Up Boosters. Double Charizard in that box, by the way. Two Charizard in a single box of team up he also pulls bill well guess what that's all right the charizard pull is enough to compensate for the other cold packs you missed NF uh, kelby's nfl spot did i you are correct i'm sorry about that kelby spot seven eight and nine is remaining we're gonna get this into a new bag for our friend bradley brewer Mr. Bradley. Here we go. Boop. What NFL is it? We have an NFL hobby box with two autographs in it. And it's about to fill up. All the spots are about to have been sold out. Okay, Mr. Bradley, you're going into the B box. Sweet. Who's up next? Mr. Jorge Sanchez. Who says, can I get four jet black packs? And if you can, can you put them in Amos Castros' bag? Okay, let's do that. One, two, three, four. If you say so, just keep in mind, after I ship them out, it's not my deal, whatever happens to them, okay? Sleep. Up to your friend Amos at that point. Oops, I want to drop that. All right, Mr. Jose Sanchez, right? Oh, Jorge. There we go. One, two. Come on, hot card. Three. This has got to be hot. It is. Oh, so hot. Oh, that's a snipe, mister. Now that's uh, Caitlin, right? It's Caitlin. Oh, that's one of the best pulls in the entire set. And you just got it in four packs. Congratulations. All right. Now you're saying that this goes into Jose or uh, Amos's back. I can't speak. Aiden, Anthony, Anthony, Justin, Ardenan. The question is where's his bag? Adam Smith, Andrew Schmidt, Austin, Austin. Well, he's not in there. Whatever happened to Kelly? Yeah, whatever did happen to Kelly? I invited her out to drinks and she just didn't answer. I'm more of a Jack Kelly's mom kind of guy. <laughs> oh my God. Cheese, Brian, 
Here we are. Wow, man, we got so many bags. It takes a really long time to locate a bag sometimes. How many Eevee left? We got lots and lots of Eevee left. Go nuts. Mr. Sven Krill says, I thought we did that one. Is it a copy of the same? He says, now that I got a bag, let's go again. Oh, okay. Same order. You got it. So he wants the same order. No, no, damn it. <laughs> I just did two bads at the same time. The, uh, the box that was holding the Don Rust boxes it fell back on the other side of the table and my laptop closed. I'm, I can't stand it. <laughs> I need like more shelves, man. I need a lot more shelves for what we do. I want 20 shelves. Okay. So we are nearly out of the Don Russ cards. Driving me nuts. My computer's loading up. Mr. Explain your NFL prism to Mr. Riddle. Uh, we have a reserve list going for a hobby box of NFL prism booster packs. That's the whole explanation. I'm trying to log my computer back in. Okay, we got the Dawn Rust packs here. Oh, wow, it came back up pretty fast. Okay. So, Mr. Sven says two evolutions again. You got it. Loving that somebody's opened these evolutions. All right. Are you ready? Now, the music stopped. Get that music going again. I'll turn it up a little bit, too. Okay. Good luck. Oh, mister. He had some great luck. Let's see if we can keep it going. We got to pull the mellow ball for you, mister. Pull a mellow ball. Mister, you need a less squeaky chair. No, that's my favorite part of the stream is the squeaky chair. We got Marvin, Goran, Mitchell, Cam. Ooh. Karis. Zion Williamson, James Wiseman, and Skylar Mays. Boop. I would be okay with any team winning but the 60, 76ers. What? Lakers are arguing in the locker room. What are you guys talking about? Here's Julius, Alex, Kyle, Jimmy, Zion Williamson, which is that guy that you just pulled, Wilt Chamberlain, Alexej, Alexej Pokusevsky and Isaiah Stewart. Hmm. Boop. What you need is an employee. That way you have someone there to look at. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that would be nice. That would be nice. But you know it costs a lot to hire an employee. Did you know that? One of the downsides to uh, having high minimum wage is a lot of jobs that could exist suddenly disappear because the employer can't afford to pay that much because the job simply doesn't earn that much. One of those beautiful downsides to hiring the minimum wage, you actually eliminate jobs that would have existed otherwise. Luca, look at this Luca. He's so nice. Boop. Marcus, TJ Warren, Draymond. We got Nicola, Devin Vassell, and Obi Toppin. Boop. The job is obsolete then. Not at all. The job just goes to some other country. It's not obsolete at all. All right. Very nice, mister. So for your Dragon Balls, let's see what you get. We say that we're not allowed to do it here, so they do it over there. It's real simple. They go, oh, you're not going to do it? I guess we'll do it and make the money. 
What is this? You got Cyan Peace. That's like a 100,000 card. You did it, mister. And how about this? Ah, there we go. Cyan Fierce Kick. Congratulations. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for a hollow out of these packs. Can I donate a couple bucks to start a chair fund? <laughs> you guys want to start a chair fund? If you guys want to have a chair fund, I'll even let you guys pick the chair out, okay? How does that sound? I don't mind. I'm just going to keep using this one because, uh, well, it works. It's squeaky, but it works. Chair crowd fund. All right. So here's the chair crowd fund, and you could donate like a buck to it. Keep in mind, though, if you do really do donate $1, uh, PayPal will take 50 cents of that because there's always a 50 cent flat fee. Would you take all the... Hold on, what? Mister, would you take all the cards in my pack for an NFL prison pack? Not sure if the cards I have are worth it. Okay, so I would need them to be worth about $190. Let's see what you have real fast. I, I'm not close-minded to it, but I don't know if you have that much. Okay, Calyrex. Got lots of hollows. You got some of the McDonald's hollows. Those are nice. Blastoise is nice. Oh, this Charizard's pretty nice. I have to say, he's a little thin on the left, though. Pikachu is nice. So you got some nice cards in here. However, they're not going to equal 190, unfortunately. Whoop. Okay. So this was for our friend, Mr. Sven Krill. He's krilling it. He's got Cyan Fierce Kick. Oh, that's so fierce. Wow, and just like that, Mr. Sven, you got a nice chubby bag. You got a sack. Let's see who's next. Pokey Pokies. UFC coming soon. Show she. That's right. I ordered them a couple days ago, actually. I, I guess I didn't update that in the description. Uh, we have some UFC cards on the way. Pricey ones, too. They're going to be the same. They're going to be just like the NFL cards. They're going to be a hobby prism box, okay? All right. So, why don't we look at the price of that Aerodactyl real fast? That's Fossil. Dactyl. All right, let's see what we get. Oh, perfect. We have an exact rep. We have the exact same Aerodactyl, and he's for sale. And he's for sale for $53. $53. So I will make mine $52. How do you like that? Okay. Aerodactyl. I'm loving this price gun. This is the star of the show, but we're going to place them to the side because we are going to price this card next. Blaine's Charizard. Blaine's Charizard. He looks nice. Oh, there isn't an... Oh, wait a second. Yeah, there is an exact... Wow, that's expensive. There's an exact copy of that card. It's a CGC graded one. So we can get the price for them right now. So the one I'm seeing is 340. I'll make mine 335 just to be the cheapest. There we go. Urshifu 9. Oh, man, that's a cool one over there. I forgot about this. So, Urshifu VMAX. How do I spell Urshifu? Man, that music's so good. Damn. He goes for $193 plus 8 more dollars, which is... 201, I think. Is that right? Is that the English one? 
Oh, it's the English one. Never mind. Hold on. We have the Japanese one. Uh, I don't know what to sell the uh, Japanese one for. I'm just going to set it to what I'd like for it to sell for. All right. He is a nice card, and he is a hyper rare. You can actually go through quite a few boxes of the Japanese sets before you find one hyper rare. So we're going to do 135 on him. Now, how about that Latios Latios? Holy. Here is a 9.5 Latios Latios for $725. Jesus. Show she holy. Wow. That's like a large right there. Is it CGC or a different company? It's CGC. Yeah, the one that's 9.5 is CGC. 725 is what they're asking. Actually, with shipping, theirs is closer to like 730. So mine is just, uh, mine's actually cheaper. Okay, we, we priced up a few slabs. We're going to be doing that throughout the night until we can get all those slabs that returned all priced up. And this will make it very easy for me to uh, also set the live custom boosters up anytime I need to know how many spots we need. I'll just look at the card. After Sven, we have Sergio Espinoza. He would like three Eevee heroes. How's it going, Mr. Sergio? Three Eevee heroes. Mr. Assert your dominance and open a vintage Japanese pack. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you sell Malo and Lana? Uh, they have not been sold yet. Did I price them? I don't even remember. Umbreon. All right, Mr. Loving Umbreon. This set's going to be a popular set. <laughs> Just Evolutions, huh? <laughs> and Sylveon VMAX. I mean, yeah, this set's going to be popular for sure. Please don't well, spam. It, I think Lana in Molo card was 265 was it? That's a pricey-ass card, man. There you go, Mr. Sergio with an S, huh? Let's go find your bag. Sergio. Sylvester. Sergio Espinoza. That price gun. Dude, the price gun's MVP right now. Big fan of the price gun. Jonas Rosado. He says, one live custom, five EV heroes, one pre-grade by you. You actually don't have to grade them. I just want to see what cards I have in my bag. Also, I have a book box. What's up, Mr. Jonas? Jonas Rosado, one live custom. Oh, look. PSA 8, number 65. Now, that was from the lunchtime uh, stream. That means somebody cleared out all those live customs for you, mister. And let's see. Is it this one? Oh, man, that's cool. You're getting Rocket Returns Magic Carp. And if you didn't know this, not only is this card super rare, uh, there's very few of them graded, and it's quite expensive, too. Yeah. There are the X-Team Rocket Returns cards. There are not a lot of them. Congratulations. To help you guys understand where this card came from, uh, the EX series came out right after Sky Ridge. See, 2004. That was when what, a Wizard of the Coast lost the license to print Pokemon cards. And the Pokemon company took over printing the cards. They released the EX series. You got these really cool stamped cards after that. Well, they didn't print a lot of the stamps cards because the demand for Pokemon cards fell a lot around that time. So they did like a really short print run. And even today, if you look this card up, there is just barely any of them graded and they're all super expensive. So it's an actually pretty rare card. And uh, Magikarp's nice. We like Magikarp. He turns into Gyarados. That's why. And uh, it's especially hard to find tens of Rocket Return. They go for like $700 now. They're crazy. So he also wants the five BB heroes. One, two, three, four, five. Ba ding 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 ding. 
Ah, you must have been trying to say something naughty. <laughs> Remember, the robot blocks anything naughty. Let's see what you're trying to say. I'll give my souls and my right kidney and my doggy for the sign shuckle. <laughs> give me your souls. Oh, no, it goes fetch their souls. <laughs> what do we got here? We've got Zor uh, Zorark. I almost called him Zorua. Zorark. Cold. Here's Florjez. Oh, man, you got a rough round. Oh, it's a good thing you pulled the magic carp because that was a cold round of Eevee Heroes. All right, well, I'm going to include these together with this. Mr. Jonas. That was a very cold round. You're very lucky to pick up that magic carp because it helps balance it out. The robot lady's censoring me. She's a lefty. <laughs> All right. Who would have guessed that the Democrats would become the party of censorship? It's like things have flip-flopped from the 90s. Jonas Rosado. He also wants the pre-grade. So let's go find Mr. Jonas's bag and give him the pre-grade that he wants. Marquez Ramiro. Now we're just looking for your bag, Mr. Jonas. Oh, you're not that bag. You're not that box. You must be in this box. What about the Fauci files? Here we go. Mr. Jonas, I didn't know you pulled this Glaceon. Damn, dude, you're doing very well. Wow. So your Glaceon looks great. He looks great. These aren't very gradable. It's a bit fat on the right. This looks great. Oh. Yeah, he looks great. You could grade this, probably. Yeah, I think he... Well, he's a bit thinner on the top than the bottom. Yeah, this is slightly off-center. I mean, if you grade these at PSA, they might have a shot at 10. That's what we've learned. This is probably a 9. Rock Rough. Rock Rough looking good. Charizard looking thin on the right. Latios looking thin on the right. Raichu, looking thin on the right. Magikarp. So, Galio, looking thin on the bottom left. Here's Moltres, Aptos, Articuno. He's thin on the top and the left. Pikachu. He might have a shot at PSA, not at CGC. <laughs> eh, he's got a white edge, sorry. Raichu, thin on the left. Here we go, you got a water energy. Uh, it's a bit thinner on this corner, but I would give it a shot anyways. You got Ho-Oh EX. Nice, dude. Oh, he's got a big white dot. Sorry. You know, he is a bit thinner on the left than the right. I think PSA would probably still pass him. That looks good. Charmander. Charmander. Got a little bit of a white corner going down here and here. Be careful with that. <laughs> Still getting censored, mister. Somebody's trying to send me a message, and they are getting censored. Yeah, I'm not liking these corners on these. The corners have got little white dots. Grookie, then on the left, then on the left. I mean, this might make it through. It's thin here, and then it's got a faint dot here, and a faint dot here. I mean, I you know, you could try it out at PSA, but CGC going to destroy that. We're sure of that. We're, there's no question. CGC will immediately detect the problem and rock your boat. So these appear to be graded already, maybe. Darkrai, I said he was a 9. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So these might already be graded. Got your hollows down here. All right, so I said avoid these for grading. And we're going to add these to that side. Okay, so these are mostly nines. The Pokemon from the McDonald's are real risky, I'd say. Yeah, you can send some of these out if you want, but can't guarantee you much. Alex, if you have to say it's funny, it's probably not funny. What? That's not true. I really like your Glaceon, Mr. Jonas Rosado. That's a great card, very gradable. 
All right, very cool. You came out of this box, didn't you? Sweet. Boy, I'm tired. So, Mr. Alex says, I'll get you a perfect 10, no print line, X, Y, Eurozard for the shuffle and get Jesse two for a three-way with you. Oh, well, that's what it is. Three-way. The robot lady probably said, mm -hmm. you're not going to say that. No, no, no. <laughs> we got a religious robot. Next up, we got Ty Tyler Childers. What's up, Tyler? He says... One battle style for the X Vision. Not sure if I have a bag under the name Tile Childers or not, but I do under the X Vision with the PSA 9 Test Tube Mewtwo. How's it going? I believe you do have one under Tyler Childers. Let's go looking for it real fast. Tim Frazier, Tim Love, Trent, and Tyler Adolfson. Mahil, Trent. Lambert, Tristan, Tyler Childer, right here. I knew you had a bag. And here's your pack of battle styles. It's frillish. Woohoo! Nothing too wild, huh? <laughs> Next up, we got Caesar Soto. He says, for Don Ross. You got it, Mr. Caesar. Goblin says, I like BB. What is that? I've never heard of that. Ooh. Come on, Orange Lamello, says Eddie Petty. Sneep. Get us that hollow Lamello already. We need hollow Lamello. Mr. I also found a Golden Meowth promo card. Oh, sweet. That's so cool. Fruit roll-ups. Okay, we got Steven. Let's just jump to the fun stuff. We got Jordan Nwora, Josh Green, and Kira Lewis. Mr. The Cam is blurry. Is it? Can anyone else confirm that it's blurry? Looks fine from my point of view. He says, no, it's not. What are he smoking? What's next? We got, oh, Robert Covington, Jalen, and LaMelo Ball. Pull LaMelo Ball. Here's LaMelo Ball. Jalen Smith. And Robert Covington. It's a little blurry. Is that any better? <laughs> Okay, what else? Lonzo, Gary, buddy. Here's Jarrett Allen, Tyler, and Tyler. Tyrell, I mean. Tyler and Tyrell. Would you be willing to trade stuff for my test tube Mewtwo? Uh, so I think you're saying that you got a PSA 9 test tube Mewtwo. Is that what you said? I might be able to trade you an, uh, some store credit if you would like. Give me a second. All right. And finally, we've got Derek Rose, Stephen, Gordon, Bradley, Keldon. Here's Russell Westbrook. Any hidden fates available? We do have hidden fates, but I removed it from the menu. So we're making the menu smaller, and the expensive cards are going to be rotated in uh, just randomly. Right now, we're focusing on the NFL pr prism which is why you guys haven't seen anything else work its way over here. Okay, that's for Mr. Caesar Soto. Hello, Caesar Soto. You gonna be up top already? Let's see if he's already up top. Well, I don't see him up top. Mr. Caesar. Yeah, we got Hidden Fates. Hidden Fates is pretty popular. Any hidden incognito searches? Yes, but don't tell my wife. Next up, we got Bradley Brewer. He says, four more packs of Japanese team-up. You got it. Anything for you, Mr. Bradley. One, two, three, four. 
huge fan of these. Sneep. Nick says, I'm telling. That's okay. She probably watched it with me. So what do we got? got a cold pack. I restarted Monster in the World Niceborn. I've been watching TGC videos again. I missed them. Oh, we got Salabi and Venusaur. I miss them too, mister. Man, I worked hard on those. Cold. And Electrode. Okay, it's just an Electrode, though. Good morning, TCC. Am I able to claim my 8 bucks store credit towards a pack of Evo if I send in the remainder? Yeah, why not? Let's do that. A friend of mine has a Blaine Charizard, which was graded 9 by CGC. He cracked it open and sent it to BGS. BGS gave it a 10. Wow. Interesting. So this is for Bradley Brewer. There you go, Mr. Bradley. Do, 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 do. ID Chronicle says four packs of Silver Lance. All right. One, two, three, four. Sneep. Dude, my back's kind of hurting at the beginning of this stream. That's no good. I was playing some video games earlier today, by the way. My wife and I were playing some Smite. You guys ever played Smite? That's a fun game. We got Frost last. last. Can't speak. Cold. And Gardevoir. Somebody trying to send another naughty message. Okay, this goes to ID Chronicle. Let's find ID Chronicle. Isaac. Gregory. ID Chronicle. How's it going, ID Chronicle? Welcome back, Mr. Jock Joe Kick, MVP, no debate. What are you guys talking about? It sounds like you're debating. Anthony Roberts says, Mr., give me a ghost of the past, please. I have a bag. All right, Mr. Anthony Roberts with ghost of the past. Could be a one-pack snipe. Who knows? Has anyone donated to the chair? Not yet. I thought that was one of them. <laughs> All right. That was not a ghost rare. Okay. We could have a fun topic of debate tonight. What do you guys want to talk about? So Anthony Roberts says that he has kind of a fat bag. Gravy, Anthony Rodriguez. Ghost card is last in the pack if it's a ghost. Oh, okay. Okay. Andrew, Austin, Austin, Alejandro, Andrew, Andrew, Awesome, Ardenan, Amanda, Alexander, Austin. Aliens and UFOs. Has the government done the debriefing on that yet, or is that still coming up? Alejandro. Did we already check up top for this? I have not seen your bag. Did you have kind of a fat bag over here? Is that what you said you had kind of a fat bag? No, that's that'd be really fat if your bag was that. Bradley, Joseph Gyron. Oh man, the A box is a cluster. There are far too many A bags. We need to do something about this because this, here it is, Anthony Roberts. This is eating up a lot of time in the live stream. We can't have this. You know how many boxes we have for the A's? Let me show you how many boxes we have for the A's. Got any games? Which Pikachu is more valuable, Red Cheeks or Yellow Cheeks? Well, Red Cheeks is the original design, and then they changed it to Yellow Cheeks, I believe. So I would say Red Cheeks. One, two, three, four, five. And then after I've checked those five boxes, I then have to check the overflow boxes. So that's just too many. Plug this back in. Boop. Okay. John Loman, he wants three. NFL Custom. You got it, Mr. Loman. Oh, filling it out, huh? Good luck, John. And, okay, we need these packs right here. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That Charizard slap for sale? It sure is. $335. Oh, who won the last custom? Uh, who was it? I don't remember. Jeff Leon. Mister, can we do a swap? If I don't get it, keep the hollow. We'll save time, says John L. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Anyone else want to save some time? Let me keep the hollow. Uh, Robot Lady. Let's go check Robot Lady. There was a recent news story about how a city town hall got burned down where records of the alien's grave happened and the fire started at 5 p.m. Huh. Let me try to get the robot lady working. It could be bugged out. All right, let me reset OBS. It's probably bugged out. All right, well, while we're doing that, one more shuffle. Somebody in the uh, live stream, pick a number for me, will you? Pick a number, any number. It's in this one. <laughs> three, one, two, three. All right, John Loman. Good luck, Kelby DeLoon on one. And Kelby DeLoon on two. Sorry, Kelby. Those were cold. Now, we just had Kelby's bag. Kelby was in the overflow, correct? Here it is. Kelby was in the overflow. Here you go, Mr. Kelby. Sorry about that. That's a tough round. Jack Gray on three. Sorry, Jack. Jack Gray is not going to be the one. Jack just had me ship his bag. I'll place this to the side, Mr. Jack. Michael Manuen. Oh, there it is. It goes to Mr. Michael Manuen. Mr. Michael. Is Mr. Michael here? Where's Mr. Michael? Congratulations, Mr. Michael Manuen. Let's go ahead and place him into spot number 10. Mr. Michael, let me know. If it was not the case that you wanted an NFL prism. No, this is Patrick. <laughs> How do I spell his name? <laughs> I don't know how to spell that name. There's two spots remaining, uh, but we're going to start a fresh round of the NFL custom. So really, there's only one spot remaining because the spot we're going to be playing for is 11. And that means only 12 remains. So I'll draw a line here. Okay. I love Red Cheeks, says Ghost Smuggler. Oh, my God. Shirzad says, I bought one. Oh, so that's going to go to Shirzad. Well, let me mention, before we start another round, is there anyone who wants to just straight up buy this so that we don't have to play a custom round anymore? I'll give you guys a minute. If you buy that spot, if you claim that spot right now in chat, I'll write you in and, and refund anyone who tried to buy custom, okay? <laughs> Set this back here. Is today the day? What's up, Ricardo? So we got to also confirm that Shirzad was talking about an actual pack. If he was talking about a custom booster, then uh, that spot is not filled, okay? You selling the Ladios for one? 25 where do i buy no no no. this is for 725 that is a seven he's quite expensive okay so the robot lady's broken we're resetting obs mister i just got the shipment with my bulk wow 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 that was a lot and heavy <laughs> Yeah, that's what a lot of people say, actually. Uh, when we send out that bulk box, they don't realize how much it is. It could be a lot of bulk. Okay, so... We need to refresh. 
Sorry, Mr. John Loman on the tough round. Mr., can we do a swap out one night and have the wife open cards on the stream? She did have a night where she opened up cards for a substantial amount of time. And she told me it was too difficult and that it requires too much energy. Actually, it's funny. I had a guy contact me recently and he said he was trying to do box break live streams as well. And he said that it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. I want to book box a while back heavy as hell. All right. So here we are. I love my book boxes. Now nah, he bought spot 12. Okay, we're refreshed. Man, this is slow. My computer's running so slow. Here we go. So after John Lohman, we have Mr. Jonas Rosado, who says five more Eevees. You got it, Mr. Jonas. Mr. Jonas. I have a random box of bulk that weighs like 80 pounds. People can't... People can't people that is... I think you mean can't believe that is Pokemon cards. I believe it. Do you know what live stream she did about how long ago? It was a very long time ago, so you will have almost no chance of finding it. It is in a literal ocean of live streams. Not worth searching for. Oh, I need the shuckle. I'll do for the shuckle. I'll do spankies for the shuckle. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> Jonas, you got Jolteon. You got Flareon. All right. He's using his fire jitsu on you. And that's cold. Here's Eldegoss. And Shazad says, I'll buy 11 as well. Let's open the box. No problem. No more custom spots remain, everyone. Do not buy any custom spots. And let me make sure somebody else didn't buy it before you, Mr. Shazad. So I'm now going to remove the customs from the menu. All right, we'll hit save. There we go. Cool. So Mr. Jonas. Jonas. James. This was for Jonas, right? Yeah, it was for Jonas. Where did we put you, Mr. Jonas? I'm hyped. I'm going to donate to your chair fund. Oh, my God. Chair fund? Or some WD-40. Boop. The funny thing is I actually own WD-40. I just never, I never spray the oil on this because I don't want to get it on the carpet and everything. All right, so after Jonas, we have Shirzad, who did in fact buy a spot. We have Sergio Espinoza, who wants two Eevee heroes. You got it, Mr. Sergio. Have to research what's the most comfortable chair. Anthony says, well, take it outside. Mr., I'll take the last spot on Prism. Just write my name down, and I'll send over the Coney... The Coney, uh, if Shirzad has already paid, then it's going to go to Shirzad because that's just how we run it on this channel, okay? So I don't know if Shirzad's already paid for that spot. If he hasn't, then you should go for it, mister. Sergio Espinoza. Shirzad says he has paid for 11 and 12, so it is sold out. Wow, it goes so fast right at the end, doesn't it? Good luck, Mr. Sergio. Cold. And Ante. Sorry, Mr. Sergio. That's a tough round. Good thing in your last round you pulled Umbreon and Sylveon. That helps. Have I played the new Pokemon Snap? I have not played much of anything lately. I have played Pokemon Shop. That's what I play, uh, played. So we can also go ahead and mark the NFL Prism itself as sold out, can't we? All right, NFL Prism Hobby Booster is sold out. Mr. Caesar says, seven Don Russ. You got it, Caesar, seven Don Russ. One, two, three, four, five. We got five packs there. Is that Blanche Charizard the corrected version? 
Uh, I don't believe so. I believe that's the normal version. If it was the corrected version, it would probably be worth more. I don't know. Do people care about the corrected version? I've actually never cared that much. Okay. This is for Caesar Soto. He wants seven packs of Don Russ. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Woo. The corrected version has way smaller pop. That's true. So probably the corrected version would cost more simply because there's fewer of them. Uh, you know, this is my take on those kind of cards, though. I've had a lot of time. I've had two years now to think about error cards and trophy cards and stuff like that, cards that are technically rare. And my feelings on them is that if the error or the trophiness or whatever does not make the card look really beautiful, I think they can sometimes be overvalued. So like the corrected Blaine's Charizard, you know, this little fighter energy is fixed to be a fire energy. I guess that's cool. Doesn't really change the card that much. You barely notice it, in fact. So there's a bit of a story to it, uh, and that's about it. And I don't know how much I want to pay for that story. Joel says, damn, mister, I've been tuning in since December. I haven't been collecting much, but trying to jump back soon. Love the streams. You really helped me out. Your squeaky chair turns me on. What? <laughs> that's Kathy Gee saying your squeaky chair. Oh, I'm horny. All right, let's see what we got. So <laughs> this is Tyrese, Malachi Flynn, and RJ Hampton. Is the hobby box being open tonight? In fact, it is. Once I see Mr. Shirzad's final payment on spot number 11, the box will be sold, and that will immediately cause us to open it, okay? I'm horny. What do we got? Damien. Here's Cam Reddish, Casey Stanley, and Jemias Ramsey. What box? It is an NFL Prism hobby box. There's supposed to be 12 packs in it, but we already opened one pack, which means that there's only 11 packs remaining. We haven't pulled the auto out, so that's real good. What do we have here? Nicola, Jordan Nwora, and Theo Maldon. All right. Come on now. Who wants to sell their NFL Prism Spot, says Ricardo. Herbert Patch Auto, let's go! Boop. JJ, James, Chris, here's Damar, Isaac, and James Wyman. Any Shining Legends? How's it going, Complex Ruins? I Well, I do have Shining Legends. I do not sell them directly anymore. Uh, and this is because we want to avoid searching. If you want to buy five of them, though, uh, and crack out... Oh, you got a nice one. If you want to buy five of them, let me know. Okay, and this is... Who is this? Tyus Jones? I don't think I've heard of him. The Memphis Grizzlies. Jersey. Anthony Edwards, Skylar Mays, and Saban Lee. Eddie says, meh. How much? So we were doing $42 a pack earlier, and I'll probably stick to that number. Unless I... Yeah, I'll probably stick to that number for now, but I haven't I haven't done any research in a little while. So we got LaMelo Ball. Pull LaMelo Ball. They were quite expensive. And that is because everyone's opening them. Last pack. Oh, mister. Did you just get a double? CJ, John, Bradley. Here we have Carmelo Anthony. Oh, Double rainbow. Mr. Where the scream for a ball. What? Carl Anthony, Cassius, and Jemias. Oh, you're asking if I'm going to pre-order Chilling Rain. I absolutely will not. I'm all done doing pre-orders. Pre-orders, I've, I've come to the conclusion pre-orders uh, are no good. So I do not like pre-orders. All right, toss this off to the side. Oops. Mr. Caesar Soto with a C. And where are we going to find your bag? I bet it's down here. Here it is. 
And now Caesar has a really, really fat bag. Wow. And we are nearly out of Don Russ. Mr. Do you know about Panini Points? It's important to know before opening the hobby box. I do not know about Panini Points. You should go ahead and educate me. Are they like digital points for like an online store? You could have pre-ordered your body weight and chilling rain ETBs on Pokemon Center today. That's okay. More, more for you guys. More for regular hobbyists. Mister, they are QR codes, and if you show them on stream, they can get taken. Okay, so I should make sure that only the person who ordered the pack gets the QR code. Is that what you guys want to tell me? Panini Points is a card that is in place of the auto. It has a QR code that you need to keep away from the screen so somebody doesn't take it. It's how you redeem for certain valuable cards. Just cover up the QR code. Thank you so much for the tip. We'll keep an eye out for that. That's if it's a scratch. Do not scratch it. Okay. So next up, we got Ricardo, who says, for NFL Prism Custom. Mr. Ricardo, I apologize, but we are all out of those. I'm going to go ahead and send you a refund on that, okay? All right, we're issuing a refund. So you got your money back. No harm done. Mr. Dave Ocalon is it Ocalon? Ocalon. He says, Mr. Here's the remainder towards a pack of evolutions with the other eight bucks from an overpayment in my last order. Dreaming of a super snipe, Mr. You got it, Dave. Where are my evos? Here they are. You got it. All right, Mr. Dave. Oops. Oh, well, you got a Pikachu right off the bat. Oh, look at that. Unfortunately, a Pikachu with a slight bend in the middle. Oh, I thought that was Charizard that we just jumped to. That's Charmeleon, Reverse Hollow. Still pretty cool. Part of the Charizard Evolution tree. Better than uh, Weedle. <laughs> All right, we are going to throw you that Pikachu as well. That's for Mr. Dave O'Callan. Is it O'Callan? No, it's not. Well, it's an okay pull. Again, uh, like I was saying, it's better than like if you got a train or a reverse hollow, right? So, Dave, you're probably in the D-Box. Here's Damon Sims. Mr. Dave. Thank you so much, Dave. Who's next? Time to refresh. You can get two autographs or one auto and Panini points cards. Oh, okay. Hopefully two autos. You guys think the autos are preferable? Okay, we just refreshed. And here's Shirzad. Shirzad taking that last spot. Mr. Shirzad. He's spot 11 and 12. Okay, let me show you guys how this is going to work. There's a total of 11 packs here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. This is because we already opened Mr. GJM's. We're going to start writing names down. Two is Nicholas Lenhart. We're just going to write the numbers down. We don't need to write their full name down because we've already got this list going. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Come on now. 11 and 12. So there we go. So these cards represent your packs. And we're going to shuffle these up so that your packs are randomized. That's very important. Here's the hobby box. We opened it oh so long ago. Here are the packs inside. Oh, that feels good. All right. So there they are. We're going to go top to bottom on these packs. Here's the empty box. Anything in... No, nothing valuable in there. These are huge packs. I want to point that out. There's a lot of different cards in here. Look at what it says. 12 cards per pack, guys. And if you think about it, they're all hollow. So it's very interesting. Okay, now we're going to shuffle these. So my job is to make sure these get shuffled. It's 
really a small pile of energy cards, so it's, it's always hard to, like, handle, basically. Threes, maybe. Do you have too many cards? All right. Who wants to give me a number? Just mush up around on the table. I would, but there's not that much room. Vahan Gavandian says one. Okay, we can do that. One. And now the deck is split. Okay, good luck. Uh, let's see who goes first. Number three, which is Jonathan Morris. Jonathan Morris goes first. Jonathan Morris. Let me get some fresh penny sleeves, too. Oops. Didn't GJM already get his pack? He did, yes. So he's not in this pile. Okay, so, yes, Jonathan Morris was number three. And let's see what he pulls. Are you guys excited for this? Damn, these packs are huge. I have never opened a Pokemon card pack. Look at how many cards that is. That is a thick pile. Robot lady still not working? So that was an order, or that was a message from Guerrero. He says, I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You other Pokemon can't deny when a Jinx, Jinx walks in with an itty bitty waist with the round thing in your face, you get sprung. All right. Well, unfortunately, the robot lady is not working tonight, so I had to sing that one out for you guys. Okay, Earl Thomas. There's only 11 packs remaining, guys, because we already opened one of them for GJM. I did this to demonstrate exactly what's in the packs. Uh, because we've never opened these before on this channel. Here's Yannick Nagako. Harold Landry. We're touching the sides of the cards so that we're not spreading too many fingerprints around. Except the cards almost stick to each other. So here's Michael Strahan. Patrick Mahomes. Kansas City Chiefs. Wow, people love the Kansas City Chiefs out where I'm at. We're in Lake of the Ozarks, and the Kansas City Chiefs are in Kansas City, which is about a two-hour drive from where I live. Green Bay Packers. Okay. Here's Kenyon Drake, Arizona Cardinals. Dude, these have so much, like, weight to them, basically. They're, they're so thick and reflective, it's crazy. Julio Jones, they really do feel just like uh, the Topps Chrome cards that you get. Oh, something underneath there. So let's not ruin it. We got Jimmy Garoppolo. Garoppolo? Okay. And now you pull David Mon Montgomery. Interesting. So this is kind of like what GJM pulled. Very fancy. So that appears to be your fancy card in the pack. Now you're going to get... It appears you get two rookie cards as well. So this is Cole Komet, the Chicago Bears. Check for numbered. And, oh, okay, so there's two more. What is this? So we got Jordan Love. And the very last card, what is this? You and your child could win two tickets to Super Bowl LV, and your child could be the next Panini Super Bowl kid reporter at Super Bowl LV. Opening night, you could win. Scan the QR code or go online and enter the access code below for a chance for you and your child to win the tickets to Super Bowl and opportunity. Okay, so it seems that the pack gives you an entry uh, into a, uh, a some sort of giveaway for tickets to the Super Bowl. I don't know if that's valuable at all. He says that Super Bowl already happened. Oh, well, I'll still cover it up because I don't know what happens if you scan it. Check the, the back of the blue card to see if it's numbered. Okay, so it's on the back. It is numbered. Look at that. 115 out of 199. I did not know that you were going to have to check the back. Well, they should have put it on the front. All right, congratulations for Mr. Who was this again? Jonathan Morris, right? Very nice. J.O. Jonathan Morris. He was here earlier today. Here he is. What would be the credit for the PSA 9 test tube? Mewtwo. 
Uh, well, I would have to do a little bit of research to tell you that, okay? So, number three, Jonathan Morris. Top load the cards. That's all right. All cards on this table are very safe. Otherwise, if I didn't think they were safe, every card would get top loaded. Here goes. Number 12, that's Shazad. Shazad goes next. Good luck, Shazad. The Jordan Love was a good one. It's a very strange night. This is not a pokey night. This is an NFL night, basically. That's a first on this channel. Okay, your very first card is Odell Beckham. Card number two is Xavier Howard. Number three is Montez Sweat. Oh, mister. Number four is Charles Woodson. Dude, these cards are so heavy. I swear, every one of these feels like it would be worth grading because of the quality of the card. You know, it doesn't feel like a cheap card at all. Here's DeMarcus. Man, these cards want to slide around a lot too. DeMarcus Lawrence. Kawan Short. Oh, man. He's my boy. Bobby Wagner. Is anyone naming their kid Bobby anymore? I don't feel like that's a name that's going to be around anymore in the future. Everyone's going to start naming their names like Elon Musk does. Mike Evans. All right. And after this, you got some kind of special card. I haven't seen it before. It's called All Out Saquon Barkley. Okay. No clue. Doesn't have numbers on the back, mister. I think this might be a little bit of a cold pack. That any good? Whoop. Hey, you guys know more than I do. Tyler Johnson. All right, that's one of your rookie cards, Tyler Johnson. And your other rookie card is Terrell Lewis. Okay. That's for Shirzad. Shirzad, Shirzad. Does Shirzad have a bag? Sylvester, Sarah. Sat, Sate, Squid Pokemon, Steven Trip. No bag. All right. Fresh bag for you, Mr. Shazad. Very cool. Cut his pack for luck. We're not going to do that. <laughs> One one Her Herbert RPA is just stuck to the other card. That's true. All right, next up we have number eight, which is Johnny Ceruzzi. All right, Johnny Ceruzzi is next. Good luck to Johnny. Here goes. I'll pay you just to top load the cards for these guys because it's a must for sports. Uh, what they can do, they can order live shipping. If you guys would like some live shipping, I can send the cards out immediately. I won't be top loading them, okay? Just want to mention that. Cameron Hayward, all these cards are safe, I promise. We got Cortland Sutton. Cortland? No mod on Twitch. We're going to have to get a mod. Can you PSA grade these? Uh, the booster packs? I don't actually know. Can you grade the booster packs? Here's Hunter, Hunter Renfrow, Khalil Mack. Okay, Khalil Mack. Oh, that's sticking a little bit. Very interesting. Okay, we have Adrian Amos. Adrian! Chandler Jones. Mister, if the card is super valuable, if the card is super value, valuable, uh, have me ship it out to you, okay? DK Metcalf. Okay, there's Metcalf. Next up, we got Cameron Jordan. Oh, it's Cameron Jordan. And... 
you got two strange looking cards. You got this DJ Moore hype card, hype prism. Hmm. Very interesting. You also get this hollow Justin Simmons, and it's an orange card. So strange. Oh, and it's a numbered card. Okay. So you get Justin Simmons numbered card. Very cool. I know you look different. All right, you also get Trevin Diggs. And Jeff Okuda. That's your last pack, and that's your last rookie. You also, like the other guys, seem to be getting this uh, interesting code card. Hmm. There we go. Who was that? That was Johnny Ceruzzi. Mr. Johnny. John Gamilla, Jose Ponce, Johnny Ceruzzi. Hope someone can pull a lamello. That's right. Pull a mellow. Okay. So, next up, number nine is Jeff Leon. So, Jeff has had some crazy luck because Jeff Leon actually has two spots. And I told him both of his spots will turn into autos. <laughs> you ready? If we get a really, really expensive card, let me know. I'll, I'll sleeve it up for them in a, in a uh, what do they call that? A card grader, just because it's so valuable. Let's see. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. <laughs> oh, man. If you pull a redemption card that's a high-end auto, you need to submit to get that card. Submit? What? Let's see. We got Jameson Crowder. Here's Marlon Mack. Amari Cooper. Mister, that orange card was a $300 card for that last pack. Really? Wow. Who was that for? That was for uh, Johnny Ceruzzi. Congratulations, Johnny. Here's Rashawn Evans. Don't forget, he gets all the other cards in that pack too, guys. Dalvin Tomlinson. Here's Alan Lazard. Ooh. There we go. Kyler Murray for the Arizona Cardler Cardinals. Dante Culpepper. That's a cool last name. Now, what is this? This one's upside down. Derwin James Jr. Okay, just a regular card. Weird, he almost looks different. I guess not. All right, and here's your special card. Jack Doyle in a really bizarre holographic card here. Oh, sadly, I think I see a print line. Let's check, is it numbered? It is numbered 25 out of 49. Wow. So there's really not too many of them, but is that a print line right there? I feel like there's a print line right here. Very cool. Out of 49, that's pretty rare, huh? Here's a Michael Ojemudia. Mudia? They really need to introduce numbered cards to Pokemon, too. I think that would be so cool. Lynn Bowden. Lynn Bowden's going to be your last card. That was for Jeff Leon. My name's Jeff. Let's see. Where's Jeff Leon going to be at? I might just create Jeff and his own bag here. Because he's got two packs, and it's going to be a real fat bag. I think Jeff already has a bag. What's up? I enjoy watching new member going to buy packs soon, setting up an account. What's up, Nathan? Nice to meet you. Okay. Next up, we've got number seven, which is James Gower. Mr. James, time to pull you an autograph with numbers on the back. One out of one, Herbert Otto. <laughs> That's that what people keep saying? 
Let's see what we get. No peeking. Pokemon did Topps Chrome in the late 90s. Yeah, those packs are really expensive now, by the way. The Topps Chrome's packs. We got Justin Tucker. Devin Singletary. McCole Hardman. Angel says, I'm late, but I made it. Fourth live stream in a row. What's up, Angel? Come on now. These cards are so airtight, they like stick to each other. Okay, here's Bryce Love. There we go. Keylon Doss. By the way, you know, these, these cards actually feel very hardy. They feel very tough. They feel like they're thick cut. George Kittle is Mr. George Kittle. Ian Thomas. What's up, two kill? It said on average two autos per box. That's what it said. Chris Carson. But then, you know, the fact that it says on average suggests maybe there'll be boxes with one auto. Okay, you got some kind of special card. Unstoppable. Shaquille Barrett. Ooh. No numbers on this card. And now you get a Tyler Higby. Very interesting. It's got like a cracked dice hollow. So cool. That's a 28 out of 99. Wow, we've gotten three of these now, these numbered cards. So the Hobby Box has provided three of these numbered cards. I'd say that's higher than, than what we're used to with like, you know, like the basketball cards. Jacob Eason. And Jordan Brooks. The slight bend doesn't matter. No, the slight bend won't matter. Uh, the slight bend, you know, when they put it into the slab, that it won't show. The slab will actually flatten it out. Okay. That was for James Gower. And uh, James has a bag on the side. Jonas Tornado. Let's find Mr. James. Here's Mr. James. James. Mr. Doing over 100 face reveals in a row. These cards are like mirrors. Are they? I wonder if we could have a special holding box for the... Uh, Yeah, give me a second, guys. So, in order to hold all of these NFL prisms, I'm going to get an ETB bottom to uh, hold them all in. And people can have them shipped out as they please. So much energy. So we'll set this here. So it's a nice wide box. That's James. Here's Sherzad. Here's Jeff Leon. Here's Jonathan Morris. Anyone else I'm missing? Yeah, we got... I thought there was one more guy. <laughs> I don't remember. All right, we'll set that to the side. Cool. So they'll have their own little box. Next up, we have number five, which is Jeremy Helmstatter. All right, Jeremy Helmstatter. Good luck, Jeremy. So we put that into that nice empty box uh, because we're going to set that box to the side and it won't get handled like, you know, very much at all. And that's good. If you're worried at all about the card maintaining its pristine edges, uh, all of them being in that box will help protect them, actually. Okay. Jonathan was the other one. What? You're saying Jonathan was the other one. Jonathan Morris. Where was Jonathan Morris? Oh, right. We had Johnny Ceruzzi, in fact. So here's Johnny Ceruzzi. And uh, was there Jonathan Morris? Did he go up top? Hmm. 
I don't see Jonathan. All right, let's keep moving. Paris Campbell. So we'll put these into an ETB, and the ETB will just be set to the side, and, you know, they won't, they won't be in contact with the other bags. The overflow. There we go. They were actually sticking. There we go, Eddie Jackson. Oh, I love this music playing. Blake Jarwin. Brian Dawkins. Tyrell Williams. Imagine no autos. I guess it could happen, huh? If these cards could come apart, that would be nice. Here we go. Chris Goodwin. Preston Smith with the Green Bay Packers. Here's DJ Moore. I see another numbered card. It's actually flipped over. Why is this one flipped over? Because it's a signed Jack Bond. Oh, Zach Bond. For the New Orleans Saints. Oh, very nice. So there's the autographed card. And it's 49 out of 75. Very cool. All right. And who was that for? That was for number five, which is Jeremy Helmstatter. All right. Jeremy Helmstatter. He, uh, Jeremy Helmstatter. Can't speak. Juwan Jennings. Ricardo says, wow, auto. I know. All right. Jeremy Helmstatter. Very nice. AJ Terrell on the last one. Stop my computer from shutting down there. Either one more auto. Mr. Bow had a stroke with that name. I know. <laughs> I'm having all kinds of back pain right now. I don't know why. Probably this chair. I'll replace it when it breaks or when it breaks my back. So Jeremy's going to get a fresh bag, and it's just going to go in this Elite Trainer box. Jeremy Helm, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I know who that is. Okay, next up we got number two, which is Nicholas Lenhart. All right, Mr. Nicholas. You ready, Nicholas? Sleep. Now, Nicholas has, I'm pretty sure, a really large overflow bag, but we're going to get him a brand new bag. Mark Andrews. Miles Jack. AKM Hicks. Oh, mister. Michael Gallup. Jerry Rice. Demario Davis. Oh, man, that's the one I wanted. Aaron Jones. How you guys liking this NFL box break? DeAndre Hopkins. This card looks pretty cool. What's this? Tyler, or Tom Brady. I almost called him Tyler Brady. Tom Brady. Brilliant card. But it's not numbered. Hmm. So it's just a cool-looking Tom Brady card. He goes, yo! Behind that, you get a numbered Tyler Boyd card. 12 out of 149. All right, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd. Mr. More NFL, I'll buy this time. Here's Josiah. Is it Josiah DeGuara? Brady's trash. What? Kashawn Vaughn. I don't think his fans think that. <laughs> and another one of these little code cards. I'm going to block it. Okay, you ready? So, Mr. Nicholas Lenhart already has a bag. He's getting a separate bag just for his NFL pulls. Okay, so you might, if you were in the NFL box break, you might have an NFL bag all by itself. Just want to make a note of that to everyone watching. 
Len Hart. Next up, boop, number 11, that's Mr. Shirzad. Uh, Shirzad, so far we've pulled one auto, so maybe you've got a chance for another auto. Whoop. Back any auto yet? We found one auto so far. There could be a second. We got Baker Mayfield. Oh, Mr. Callan Ballage? <laughs> Kalen Ballage. Here's Malcolm Butler. Oh. Dexter Lawrence for the New York Giants. Travis Kelsey for the Kansas City Chiefs. Long time ago, St. Louis, where I'm from, had the St. Louis Rams, and I went to a ball game out there, a football game. Adrian Peterson for the Washington football team. What? What kind of name is that? Here's the Eric Kendricks for Minnesota Vikings. Washington football team? <laughs> That's so dumb sounding. Here's Los Angeles Rams. That's right. So the Rams... They moved all the way out to California. So St. Louis used to have the Rams. They used to be the Redskins, but that wasn't PC. Oh, no. Christian Mc uh, McCaffrey. You know, that's such a controversial subject. Are, are Native American Indians happier that there's no longer a football team named the Redskins? I feel like this is just my opinion, but I feel like I'd, I'd feel like I'd lost something. Same with uh, when they removed the girl from the Lake of uh, the Butters package. She'd been there so long. She was like part of, uh, she was like iconic, you know what I mean? So getting rid of her, um, it just feels like she was canceled. T. Higgins Auto, second auto, everyone, for Mr. Shirzad Alamov. Congratulations, Shirzad. All right, T. Higgins. Same with Aunt Jemima. Now, it doesn't have numbers on it, though, okay? He says, very large. John L. says, very large. T. Higgins. Top load this. Super big hit. It's super. That's the best card pulled so far, I think. All right, so this is for Shirzad. Mr. Shirzad. Box is done. Good night. I'll go ahead and place this over here for T. Higgins. And uh, we'll keep going through these. Maybe we'll find something else that's real interesting. Last similar sold for $475. Jesus. How about that, Mr. Shirzad? You bought two packs, and it looks like your one pull is going to cover the cost of those two packs, basically. I'll send you six for live shipping, says... Mr. Shirzad, sounds good. Let's find Shirzad. Here we go. Shirzad Alamov. Woohoo! <laughs> Card is going for like 140 raw. Oh, I see. So you mean like 475 as a 10. You should definitely let us help us understand that. But that's pretty good. Like this is packed fresh, so maybe it would grade 10. Not seeing any print lines. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. Yeah, it looks like you could be a 10. It's $200 raw on eBay. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, very good. Congratulations, Shirzad. So remember, guys, he's got that card, but he's also got every other card in his bag. So when you think about the overall value, uh, his value might be quite high. Okay, next pack. Boop. 10. This is for Michael Manuen. Do we not already do a Michael Manoan? I feel like we already did one for Michael. Am I going crazy? <laughs> did he have two spots? Is that it? Nicholas, Kelby, Helmstad, or Jeff? I could have sworn we did one for Michael Manoan. Let me just check. There's two packs left. Six and four, so six and four are there. Oh, he won the custom? Oh, maybe that was it, okay. 
Oh, that's okay. He won the custom, and that's why it's in my mind. Gotcha. Okay. Here we go, Mr. Michael. Well, plastic hold on there. <laughs> Has the large custom booster gotten any love? It's a moving. I think we got three new spots in there, so it's moving. It's going to start moving faster, I promise, because we're going to start putting more spots, spots for the large in the live customs. And we're going to start having a lot more uh, large customs available. So they're going to be moving all the time. TJ Watt, we got Max Crosby. What's up, Deathcore? Kyle Fuller. Some dust on that sleeve. Here's... Justin Simmons. Did you know they changed the name of the Edmonton Eskimos because it was racist toward Inuit people? Damn. Everyone's so sensitive, man. Russell Wilson. We've got Ricky Jackson. Here's Josh Reynolds. What's up with all the lower grade cards in the back? Is it worth grading? No, there aren't going to be nines. Michael Vick. No, sir, you should never grade your cards. Let me do the grading. Leave the grading for me. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, places over here. Okay, what do you got here? You've got Clyde Edwards Heller, Emergent. That's a rookie card for the Chiefs, huh? You also get Vaughn Miller from the Denver Broncos. Broncos. And he's a numbered card, 133 out of 175. After that, for your rookies, you got DeAndre Swift. And this guy named Albert who has the longest last name ever. Okay, we'll cover this up. That was for Michael Manuen. I noticed, not, again, not every pack comes with this little code card. I don't know if that's meaningful at all. Michael Manuen, you're going to have your own separate bag just for your NFL pulls, and these will go into that ETB box. Say his last name, mister. <laughs> Team Trubbish says, where's the waifus? That's right, where are the cheerleader cards? We only celebrate the men. <laughs> they're going to get rid of, you know, guys, they're going to get rid of cheerleaders because cheerleaders are made for the male gaze. Ma Nguyen. Okay, there we go. Cheerleaders are made for the male gaze. Number six, Jeff Leon. Steep. No, we need the cheerleaders, mister. <laughs> All right. Good luck to Jeff Leon. I believe this is his second pack. He got both of these packs for $20 by having his name pulled out of the customs. Isn't that wild? He got two packs, 40 bucks. Sam Darnold. Brandon Graham. Derek Carr. TCC, you should do some... Do some what? Research or make it look like a noob card seller. Well, I am a noob card seller. I know virtually nothing about any of the sport cards. I'm an absolute sport card noob. Nothing in that statement could be any more true. Uh, I'm pretty confident with the Pokemon cards, though. I've been doing Pokemon cards for a long time, and I opened up lots of Pokemon cards when I was young. Joe Montana, you did it! It's the Joe Montana from the San Francisco 49ers. Here's Traquan Smith... Aaron Rodgers. Did he say cheerleaders are for male gays? Wow, that's racist. <laughs> what? Here's Kenyon Drake. Ooh. And your special card is LaVisca Chenault Jr. Let's see if this is a numbered card. It is number 97 out of 249. You also pull Brian Edwards' rookie card. And Julian Blackman for the Indianapolis Colts. 
LaVisca is huge, says Andrew Schmidt. Oh, nice. Always glad to hear that. So this goes to our good friend, Jeff Leon. What did I do with Jeff Leon's bag? Did he get a new bag? Yes, he did. So Jeff Leon, bag number two. Ooh, you know, uh, it's true. I, I know nothing about the sport cards, but every time we do a split or a break like this, I learn something. Learn a little bit. Actually, I've learned quite a bit about what the hits look like for sports. And that leaves number four, Kelby DeLune. He waited the longest. Sorry about that, Mr. Kelby. He had a long wait there. Yeah, pack number four. It's the hottest pack. Have no fear. Let's see what's in here. So I created a lot of brand new bags just for this NFL prison break, and they all went into this ETB, and the ETB will be remained undisturbed. If you have a pack of NFL custom or NFL Prism, it's going to be in here, and you'll want to remind me that you have one, okay? So I can fetch it when it's time to ship. Marlon, Marlon Humphrey. Here's Kevin Byard. It's Kevin Byard. Is it Beard? Byard? Bird? Darius Slayton. Rivers can go in waste receptacle. Sammy Watkins from the Kansas City Chiefs. I got to collect all the Chiefs cards since I live uh, nearby them. Christian Kirk. Oh, mister. Harrison Smith from the Minnesota Vikings. Go Vikings. Greg Zurelian. Is it Zurline? Zur Maybe it's Zurline for the Dallas Cowboys. All right, what do we got here? <laughs> His name's Nick Chubb. <laughs> oh, what a name. Chubb. <laughs> You're going to have to call him Mr. Chubb. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. And for your special card, you've got Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts, rookie for the Philadelphia Eagles. Number 13 out of 25. Wow. That's pretty cool, actually. I think that's the smallest number we've seen so far. 13 out of 25. Cool, dude. That's a rookie card, too. Zach Bond. Mr. Holy Shut. <laughs> Michael Warren. The who? The Hertz needs a top loader? Top load it, they say. Oh, man. Okay, give me a moment. 13 out of 25. That's pretty, um... That makes them pretty rare, I guess. Mister, that's a $1,000 raw easily. Really? As a raw card? If that's true, that does mean we had the best for last, right? How cool. How about that? No, wait a second. Oh, weird. I don't understand. We didn't already run into the code card, right? Am I going crazy? That's a big one, says Sebastian. Woo! All right. Congratulations to Kelby DeLoon. I'd sell that quick before he dips, lol. <laughs> well, maybe. That's up to Mr. Kelby. Congratulations, Kelby. Price check. All right. We'll do a quick price check. Let's find out. Mr. Oak says he sold for 600 as a nine. Oh, very good. I'll do a little research on my own. PSA 10 Jalen Hurts. And we'll look up Prism. And do we have to type in numbers? Is that the one? So I see one for like $320, but maybe it's not numbered on the back. Yeah, it's not numbered on the back. Yeah, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you guys to, to give us some info on how valuable he is. It's a Camo 25. Oh, okay. So I guess Camo matters as well. Let's take a quick look at that again. Add slash 25 to the search bar. 
Mr. Type Camo. <laughs> Type in Camo. Okay, let's do that. So we're going to say Camo. There's just none of them for sale as the Camo. Let's try looking for raw ones then. I don't even see them for sale. Yeah, I have no clue, guys. That's the nicest Digimon I've seen yet. The only sale I've seen was 600 as a 9. Yeah, that's pretty good then, huh? Because uh, we can assume the 10 goes for about double the 9. So maybe $1,200 if he's lucky. All right, and that is the end of the hobby box. Wow, that was really cool. It's great to hear that Shirzad and Kelby did so well with their pulls. Shirzad also had this um, autograph, and I don't remember who pulled the third autograph. But that's over. I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. Stream's not dead, we just had a little blip. So congratulations to Kelby and to everyone else. And I just want to mention, we have another box. You can see it's still sealed, and we can set up another reserve list. Um, but you know, I also have... Ouch. This right here, this is a Donruss Optic football. So I was going to offer these next, the Donruss Optics. But, you know, that could be up to you guys. All you football fans, if you, if you prefer the Prism first, we could do the Prism first. I'm going to go ahead to the bathroom real fast, and then I will be comfortable, and we'll keep going, because I'm sure there's a lot more orders to open. Oh man, I had to pee so bad. You guys have no idea. I was sitting there the whole time like, uh. <laughs> Drank too much for dinner, I guess. All right, I'm back. So. Place these gently in here. Let's get Kelby's name, uh, Shirzad's name. Let's get Shirzad's name on this. That was cool. We've never done that before. 
High five, everyone. We just opened up a nice box of uh, NFL Prism. That's our first time ever doing something like that. And I'm gonna set that box over here where it's nice and safe. And now we can keep going. Ben Alex, how was your quickie? What did you say? Oh, it was great. After that card, I couldn't help myself. All right, we're jumping back over to the PayPal's and seeing if anyone wants to open some more cards. Maybe some pokies. <laughs> Man, we've been doing lots of uh, sport cards. Obviously, there's a lot of interest in sport cards. Okay, I can tell that we do have a few more orders. Let's go through them. Let's see. So we have an order from Anthony Ravy. Oh, Mr. Anthony, he's been waiting a long time for his turn. He said, morning, mister. How's it going? Two Sword and Shield Shining Fates. You got it, two. He says, need top loaders. All right, top loader for all. Good luck, Mr. Anthony. You're waiting for your sneeps. There's probably a line. It's not too bad, actually. Looks like not too many people bought anything while we were cracking that box open. Maybe it's because they knew that they weren't going to get their order taken care of until the box was over. So there's Dragapult and Gym Trainer. Oh, they are training so hard. What are they training for? So Mr. Anthony says he has a bag. All right, sounds good, Mr. Anthony. Mr. Anthony. Andrew, Austin, Austin, Alejandro, Andrew, Andrew. We're looking for an Anthony. Okay, maybe check up here real fast. What did you guys think of that big box break? Was it fun? Give me some feedback. What do you guys want to see in the future? You know we have a hobby box of UFC coming out. Now, UFC, I, don't, I think they're just getting into the uh, card collectibles, the UFC brand. And that's a very cool idea because maybe we can be holding on to some of the earliest cards that they print. Ricardo says, dope, let's do the Don Russ next. Not an NFL guy, but that was cool. It was pretty cool to see the hits. I really enjoyed the numbered cards. Yeah, the numbered cards are very interesting. Imagine if they brought that to Pokemon. So like you've got Latios Latios here and he goes for 725. He's not first edition and he's not a numbered card. Could you imagine how expensive this would be if it was like first edition and numbered? Man, that'd be cool. UFC Panini 2021 first debut. That's right, Shirzad. That's exactly what we have coming in. I got UFC cards back in 2011, so I don't know about first cards. Oh, I see. Well, maybe it's Panini specifically. Maybe that's what's going on. I bet that's what's going on. Okay, we've got Joe Harris. He says, Eevee Heroes times five. Let's see if we can get you the hot pool, Mr. Joe Harris. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh. I wonder how you get a deal with, like, Panini to do cards for you. Here it goes. Sneep. Sneep. I kind of get it. So Panini is a card company, and they outsource the printing of cards for you. And Pokemon could have gone that route, but they said, no, we'll print our own cards. So interesting. I feel like they've done a really good job with it. Numbered auto rookies are the best in sports. Oh, cool. Well, Mr. Shirzad got one of those. Grimmel Snarl. Here's Leafeon V Max. Very nice. This is for Joe Harris. You need a brick and mortar store to get sports. I need to eat more paninis. I've only had maybe one. <laughs> Here's a Jolteon. Ooh. Be cool to start your own card company coming up with your own hollow patterns. Yeah, that'd be neat. I really feel like I would personally enjoy that a lot. Um, but I don't feel like I have the skill, knowledge, or money to do that because it's just that expensive. All right. Joe Harris. Mr. Joe. Is there an NHL version of Prism? Prism. NHL? What's NHL? <laughs> okay, next up we got Mr. Mr. Alex. He says, Sneep an NBA Mr. Sacrifice to the Pokies. Wow. You got it, Mr. Alex. Anything for our friend Alex. 
Hockey, you absolute cave dweller. What? National Hockey League. Oh. <laughs> You've got C.J. Ellaby, Grant Riller, and Kelly Obrey? Obrey Jr. So we're going to go ahead and sneak that up for you, Mr. Alex. As requested. All right. Alex is getting a sneak on these. What a pity. He's such a good player. I actually don't know. Boop. One less of those in the world. Next up, we got Shirzad, who says, Live ship my NFL prism. You got it, Shirzad. Figured you are about to ask that. Here we go. So we got Shirzad's prism cards. Now I'll get 10 NBA just for that. Oh, don't do that, please. We are down to just about three or four packs of the NBA cards, and then we're sold out, okay? Then we're sold out. When you do the UFC break, can you reserve me a spot, says Chug Alert. Uh, probably I could. Um, I could price those Panini. Uh, th those are going to be pricey. I think that the price was something like $56 a pack when I did a calculation. Uh, but I don't actually remember. It might be lower than that. I have to redo that calculation. Because when I realized I had accidentally bought expensive packs again, I decided what I was going to do was finish the NFL Prism first and then offer the the uh, uh, Donruss ones, the optics. So they're, they're kind of pricey. Let's go ahead and get this for Mr. Shirzad. They're not quite as pricey as the uh, ones we just went through, but they're still pricey. Okay, here we go. Mr. Shirzad. And we're gonna go ahead and print. And I tell you what, Mr. Shirzad, I'll take it over to that table and pack it up right now. I'll be right back, everyone. Good luck with the grades on this, Mr. Shirzad. I hope it grades well. Be sure to let us know what becomes of it, okay? Since we're all here to watch it get pulled. Let's see, what box should I put this in? Put more of these. Actually, you know what? Let's grab a bigger box. Special box just for stuff like this. I got all kinds of boxes. Sorry for the noise. All right, Mr. Shirzad, your cards are live shipped. Let's see who's next. He said, live ship that card, mister. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Look at those lovely Pokemons. Are you guys ready to see new, new slabs? So I can see we got a big order. Let's see what that is. If my computer will load, holy... Whoa, PayPal's telling me I can offer per, uh, subscriptions now to you guys. That's weird. wonder what we would do with that. Toro Teal says, could I get three XY Evos and a pre-grade? Sounds good. Toro Teal.
short wait time. That's right, guys. The wait time is currently short. Here goes. Sneep. And sneep. All right. And now he's with the Warriors, not just playing. Oh, you guys talking sports? <laughs> Good luck, Toro Teal. We've got it's Machamp. Machamp break. You also got this lovely Mewtwo. Let's do a quick up. Uh, Wow, he looks so clean. He looks like he'll have a shot at a 10 with PSA, not with CGC. This is just a nice card in the pack. I don't know if you'll even bother grading that. Here is Polyrath, the reverse hollow. He's a little thin on the bottom compared to the top. Okay, Polyrath, reverse hollow. And Nido King and Brock's Grit Full Art. Nice, you're pulling a full art here. Go ahead and set that to the side. We'll also take a look at this Nido King. He's got a similar problem as the Polyrath. You can tell there's some off-centering going on on the left. We're going to go through. Make sure you don't got any crazy cards in here. A Surfing Pikachu. There you go. Oops, oops, oops. Don't want those to slide around too much. Wow. He looks so clean on the back. Is he clean on the front? Maybe a little thinner right here. You might have a shot with this Surfing Pikachu. And how about Brock's Grit? Brock's Grizz a little thinner on the bottom. He might end up being a nine. Wonder if you had sport card on your title, maybe more viewers on sport cards. Possibly. Um, I don't know if I'll do that ever. You also got the Here Comes Team Rocket, but look at this. It's uh it's warped in the middle for some reason. So strange. Hmm. Very interesting. All right, we'll set that over there. Tangela, Polywag, Seal, Porygon. All right, there we go. How much you want for that, Brock? Well, it's not mine. It's for Miss Toro Teal. Mr. Giovanni Bello wants to know if you have shipped his PSA return. He said he spoke to you about it. Giovanni Bello, tell him to continue talking to me about it, okay? Tell him to send me a Discord message. I don't think I've shipped Giovanni B. Toro Teal. Uh, he has to have a message in the Please Ship channel. That's the same for everyone. Here we go, it's Toro Teal. He might have said something like, I want my slabs shipped when they come back. And I probably said something like, be sure to make a post in the police ship channel. <laughs> Can you get a 10 at CGC if the centering is the only thing that gets a 9.5? Yes, that that that's in fact uh, very possible. Okay, so let's move this Mewtwo uh, somewhere. What did we say on these? This is... Probably a 9, probably a 9, maybe a 10 with PSA. These are probably 9s, maybe a 10. Okay, here we go. Time to grade up your cards. Have we graded your cards before? Doesn't look like it. You watching Toro Teal? Here goes. Maybe slightly thinner on the bottom. Might have a shot at the PSA 10. This looks clean. These are hollows. Bird Keeper. Thin on the left here. This might have a shot at a 10 with PSA. Gengar, he's got the little white wiggly stuff. Yeah, he's not going to be a 10. He might not even be a 9. He might be like an 8. Would I grade it? Absolutely. I absolutely would. Because I don't think I saw any of those for sale. Now, you got these other cards, and these are not hollow. You will have to send these in. The corners look nice and sharp on them. So I think these definitely have a shot. But you know, it's going to come down to like whatever PSA finds wrong with them. Like, see this one very slightly looks like it has a smushed up corner. But I just can't tell if that's just how it's meant to look. You know, I tried to do a pre-grade on my own Topps Chrome Charizard. I thought he was going to be a 10 and he ended up being a 9. So these are actually kind of hard to grade. See, like this one looks flawless. Maybe it is flawless then. Will I send in these non-hollows? I probably will. Um, if I, I probably would if you had the available cash to do it. But I, I don't think CGC grades tops. They only grade regulars. PSA grades tops. So that's why PSA's got to open back up. This looks clean. Hollows, hollows, hollows. Oh, here we go. A card worth looking at. So this is a really nice card. I would definitely send this in. It looks really good. 
Dragazolt. This is definitely thin on the left. Might be a little thin on the right, actually, this one. Actually, yeah. I'm going to send them over here. I'll let you play around with that one. Some of these cards, they look really good. If it, It's because PSA seems to have very loose standards for off-centering. And yet, if you were to send that same card to CGC, you'd probably get destroyed. You know what I mean? So it's really hard for me to give you good advice. It just depends on where you're sending it. Like, do you want me to grade it for CGC or do you want me to grade it for PSA? And the answer is probably a little bit of both. You know what I mean? So this is slightly thinner on the right. Uh, it still looks really good. Here's a Zigzagoon. He looks pretty nice. Slightly fatter on the right, but very slightly. This is thinner on the bottom. I don't think I'd bother grading that. He looks okay. That looks clean. These Japanese cards come out very clean most of the time. Yep, he looks fine. That's an Eldegoss. I don't think... I don't really think you're grading your Eldegoss or Kramerot. I don't think you're going to grade those. That's very off-center. This is off-center. This is thin on the bottom. Fat on the bottom. <laughs> thin on the bottom. I don't, I don't think you want to grade a Drapion, but he's thin on the right side. That's a Zekrom. This is actually gradable. Bit thin on the bottom here compared to the top. Might have a... Oh, no, I wouldn't send him in. He's got this whiteness on the edge. That's sad. All right. Miss Toro Teal. Here's your Mewtwo. So these are probable nines. I'd send in the Brock's Grit, probably. I don't think Nido King will get a 10, no. I'd send in Brock's Grit, and I'd send in this Rhyhorn from your nines just to try them. They're worth trying. And then from over here, lots of potential 10s. Um, the Surfing Pikachu is pretty good. I bet you you're going to send the Bird Keeper because you like them. I'd send in the Gengar, even though it's definitely not a 10. These other tops cards, you could send them. I don't know if they'll get 10. Blaziken should definitely go in. Blaziken's really nice. Um, I would definitely try out on the Lapras as well. Lapras is well-loved. There you go. Lapras, Blaziken, Hollow Gengar. Those would be my top priorities. Complex, you probably have to send them to him, but maybe ask him about the auto score. Pokemon Guruju. What? <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Toro Teal. Let's see who's next. Michael Cusick, who says, Mr. Can I get two Sword and Shield base? And I want to send my Karen and Clara to CGC Tier 1 subgrades. Bag, of the bag is in the overflow. Right. So, Mr. Michael Cusick, which overflow have I got you in? I think you're in this one right over here. He wants to send Karen and Clara. All right. Let's see what we got. Clara and Karen. Easy picks, Mr. You're pokey wealthy over here. Alex says pokey burst promoting. What do you mean by promoting? Timed out. When if somebody promotes, you don't actually have to uh, time them out. You can actually just move straight to ban. James Gower says those packs were open. They were just first, so they got the pack arts in their bags. Permanent ban. All right, here we go. It's Clara. She is so nice. I was asking about you grading my personal cards. How would that work? Oh, uh, you would contact me about a shipping address. I'd provide you a shipping address. Then you'd ship all those cards out. Uh, you could have me do a pre-grade on them for a price. And when they arrive, you can pay for grading. Or you can even have them lay around over here until you have the money to grade them. So all those, all those things are possible. Of course, if my house burns down, you don't get them back. So keep that in mind. Although, your house could burn down too. You never know. Okay, Mr. Michael Cusick. He said send them what? Tier 1. All right. 
Alex says mine almost did. Oh, no, don't tell me that. <laughs> it's almost the weekend again. It's almost time to send out some CGC grading. So the other thing he ordered was two sword and shield base set. All right, you got it. Two sword and shield base. Do we have two sword and shield bases? Where is my base set? Rebel Clash. Is it on this side? Oh, it's on this side. No, that's Baby Voltage. I swear, we have base set. Where'd, where'd base set go? Oh, here it is. Couldn't find it for a second there. Had a remote on top of it. Did you send my whole bag to me or just my slabs? Uh, just the slabs. I'm sure I only sent the slabs. All right, good luck, Mr. Michael. Mr. Michael. Damn, this pack like got shredded. You pick up Vulpix and Wobbuffet. What, how much would it be for grading? I have 102 cards looking to get pre-graded and graded if they look like a 10. So it costs a little more to have me pre-grade cards if you're sending them in from somewhere other than this table, you know what I mean? So people who open cards on this table, I do the pre-grade for them for $6 and I can look at a whole bunch of cards for them even if it takes me like 30 minutes. If you're sending it in and you want me to do like a nice pre-grade, it could cost a bit more. It could cost like $15 to $30, especially if you got a whole bunch of cards you want to have evaluated and maybe they're really expensive cards. But you know, there is a value to having it pre-graded. I can basically tell you what you're going to have a better chance at a 10 with. I can tell you whether you should send it off to CGC versus PSA. So there is some time saved and some money saved and grading can be really expensive. I would say also, I can actually pretty accurately predict what grade you're gonna get. I've been doing this for a while and I know pretty certainly that when I send cards out, I can pretty much just guess their grade and it tends to come back that grade. So, on the other hand, uh, what was the other question you wanted to know? You wanted to know how much would it just cost to grade them. You can see the price I do for grading. He says, how much will it cost to get graded if they look like a 10? So, when it comes to grading, it depends on, it depends on like, will they need to be tier 2? So, if you're sending a first edition card, first edition base set, that's going to be really expensive. In fact, we'll probably have to talk about uh, tier 3 grading because... There's like rules for grading where if the card's are really expensive, you got to pay more to grade it. That's just how it works, unfortunately. The grading companies work that way. So, but uh, I, I doubt you have, I, I doubt you're sending me a bunch of base set first edition cards. So, yeah, it, we'll have to evaluate it and I'll let you know where they need to be sent. And, and then you can get an idea how much it would cost. Mr. Michael Cusick, let's go ahead and refresh. All right, oops. Do I need to tilt this a little bit? Oh. I have a bunch of rockets, some base set first edition. I'm waiting to send, says John Lemon. I want to send you a couple of expensive cards in a sealed vintage pack to send off at some point. I would only trust you with them. Well, and remember, anytime you ship these things, they could get uh, smushed in the mail. Like maybe the truck driver closes the door on top of the box. So, you know, pack them really well, guys. And uh, just remember, there's risk involved. So far, nothing bad has happened, by the way. So I'm very fortunate for that. All the cards have gone out nicely. They've all returned nicely. We've done that for like hundreds of cards already. Um, but, you know, thousands of cards in, something will probably go wrong. My worst case scenario, it's like somebody sends me a box of rare cards and they, they get lost or stolen. That's a worst case scenario. All right, let's go ahead and refresh. Are you hyped for the 25th anniversary set? I'm so hyped. Oh, I'm hyped out of my mind. <laughs> so next up, we got Michael Reed. He says three champions path. How's it going, Michael Reed? Three champions. Oops. Let's see what you got there. So the best pull out of the champions path are the two Charizards, Charizard V and Charizard V Max. However, they do not show up very often. So we're hoping he shows up right here. Can you refresh the slabs? That's a good idea. Let's see what we got. 
Pack one is Grapple Oct. All right. Pack two is Vulpix. And pack three is Scrafty Hatterene. Mister, no luck on those champions path this time. I'm sorry. That's for Michael Reed. Michael, did you already have a bag? He doesn't say if he's already got a bag. I'll, I'll go looking for a bag for you for a little while, okay? Helps if I know whether or not you have a bag. He says I do, yes. Oh, it's two kill. What's up, man? Mike Oscar. Oasis. Michael Levia. Nurses, so you're not in there. How about here? Michael Daniels. Matthew Fowler, Mike Spanos, Mario Lopez, Marcos, Matthew Grain, Martin. Still looking for Michael Reed. Nathan Lewis, Nathan. Oh, there we are. We found you. You were all over the place, mister. Your bag was hiding. Sweet. Oh, no. Where do we put you? Can we put you up top? Mr. Michael Reed, your bag is going up top, okay? Bahan Gavanian says, Sneep 1 Evo. And could you take a look at my tops pack if it's gradable? Sneep 1 Evo. You got it. He said it. He said, Sneep an Evo. Uh, oh, it's three when it comes to XY Euro. So these are your Evos, and uh, you want them sneaked, huh? Okay, those are some bulks. We'll toss those off to the side. Here goes. I'm scared. Just want to let you guys know, this could be Charizard. He says, sneak one Evo. Is Mr. Vahan watching? He says, give me the Zard. Mr. Vahan, did you mean to cut the pack in half? Oh, I better make sure. Oh, he says, yep. Okay, there we go. <laughs> oh, it's the Arcanine. <laughs> I thought it is the Charizard. Arcanine and Machop. A very nice looking Machop. Look at the centering there. That Machop, maybe he could have graded 10. He looks really, really clean. All right, thought it was a Charizard for a moment. Could you take a look at my tops pack? Um, your tops pack, Vahan Gavandian. So this came out of a fresh box, and I guarantee you that it is gradable. The question is whether or not it will grade ten. got a crease in the middle. I don't know if they consider that a problem. It looks really clean. I'd just send it off if I was you. Like, even if it grades nine, it's still a nice pack. Or you could open it right now. Do it. All right, next up, we got GMAC. Oh, GMAC. I think you tried to make an order, GMAC, but you actually sent me a bill. So a bill means you were requesting money, but you might have figured that out by now. Yeah, Miss, Miss GMAC, you sent me a bill. So let's do a rotation here. Here's Flygon. Oh, Charmander 9.5. He's very cute. Karina 9.5. And Mewtwo 9. Oops. All right, give me a minute. I'll check these out real fast. I know you guys are simping for that Flygon. What is this music? This is from Pokemon Emerald, really? So there is no Flygon available. He is apparently very rarely graded. Let's see what the 10 goes for. Uh, you know, I'm thinking of doing very, very low for him. So the PSA 10 Full Art Flygon is $95. Yeah, I don't know about him. <laughs> So the Charmander is what? SV94? Really? Are there no Charmanders available? 
No, that can't be right. Oh, it's SV6. Those silly goobers. The cheapest Charmander 10 is 135. Okay. So Flygon will probably be 30 bucks. We're gonna make the Charmander 125. We're gonna be $10 cheaper. Karina's willpower, huh? So let's see. Karina's focus. Sorry, it's focus. It looks like there are no Karina's focuses for sale. It got 9.5, right? <sighs> Maybe people are listing it under willpower, actually. Let's see. Willpower. Oh, okay. So it's listed under willpower. There's a PSA 10 version of the Karina Willpower for 150. Half of 150 would be... Well, actually, it's closer to 160, so I'm going to say 80. Wait, why would I be doing half? I wouldn't be doing half. Oh, I'm, st I'm stupid. I thought in my mind it was like a 9. No, no, no. So if there's one for sale for 158, I'm going to offer it for 138, I think. Because I'm not too crazy about any character cards. Okay, let's get the price done. I know you guys like character cards. I'm happy enough to see any character card sell. So. One, three, we'll make it one, three, five. I think this is a very fair price because you can probably crack this out and get it to grade 10 easy. Okay, 135 on the Karina. 125 for the uh, Charmander. Okay, 125. And this Flygon isn't going to cost very much at all because I hate Flygon. There you go. So he's going to just be 35. Cool. Are you pricing based off of other CGC cards or PSA cards? It's kind of a mix. Uh, sometimes there are no CGC equivalents for sale. Uh, I do believe that the, the Gem Mint 9.5 is the equivalent to a PSA Gem Mint. Uh, however, um, you would have to crack them out. You would have to regrade them. So I get all that. So I do make these a bit cheaper uh, just in case you do want to crack them out. In this case, this one's a lot cheaper. I think this one's like like 20 bucks cheaper. How much? So the, the one for sale I'm seeing is 158, which I think is kind of high. So this one's like 23 bucks cheaper, okay? Can you check the pot reports? Uh, I Maybe. I don't know. I've, I've actually never done that. How much was the Aerodactyl? Uh, the Aerodactyl, huh? Wasn't he in here? Aerodactyl was 52. Charmander 9 are there, huh? All right, very cool. I'll take it and Mewtwo, really. Our Marquez is like, I'll take some cards. So next up, we've got Jose Sanchez. He says, long time, Mr. Long time since I've opened some packs. Let's get five shiny fates. Five shiny fates. How's it going, Jose Sanchez? One, two, three, four, five. He also wants five EV heroes. Wow. I got a box and I might have two bags floating around. You might have put the two bags together by now. Jose Sanchez, you got a box somewhere? So Mr. Jose Sanchez, we got rid of boxes. Mr. Jose Sanchez, we don't really do the bulk boxes anymore. One, two, three, four, five. Um, let me place this down here. Let's go ahead and start sneaking these up, mister. The reason we stopped doing the boxes is because they take up too much room and they're too much trouble and they're too much time. They're really awful. So the boxes have been gotten rid of. Maybe I can offer you, uh, can I offer you like a $15 store credit? 
I don't even remember if your box had anything in it, but I don't see it behind me. If, if I don't see it behind me, it's probably because it didn't have very much in it. Here it goes. Jose Sanchez. We got Yan Mega. Pack number two. I could throw together some bulk for you, I guess, if you really wanted bulk. That's Dartrex. Dartrex. Eevee. Eevee Hollow. Kyogre, amazing rare from the Shining Fates. He says, okay, if I may ask, how have my box been shipped or just thrown out? Uh, what happened to, if you had a smaller bulk box, what I ended up doing uh, in order to cut down on how many boxes we had to move when we moved, I just dumped them all together in like a few boxes. So there's like some boxes that are just like a bunch of people's uh, bulk cards and and that's it. And, and that's because we had like, we had like two completely full shelves full of bulk boxes. And so many of the bulk boxes would have like two, maybe three little baggies of bulk. And it was horrible. It was all this empty space. And there were so many boxes to keep track of and so many boxes to move. And and I just, I said, we can't do this. It, it's, not, it's not worth it for me to keep track of people's bulk. Bulk isn't valuable enough. It costs way too much to ship. So, uh, you know, when we started doing our move over here, I said, we're done with bulk boxes. We're just not going to offer it. It's really awful. And I've been throwing bulk away recently. I've just been throwing it in the trash. It, You know, people tell me, oh, why don't you sell it to like a bulk buyer or something like that? Because I don't got time to put it together and sell it to a bulk buyer. I really don't. So um, some people, what they've been doing is they've been buying like the whole time. They've been buying this whole time. And they fill whole bulk boxes up. I wish I could keep bulk boxes for them. But the thing is, I don't know when someone is going to be buying uh, cards all the time. Uh, but then we get a lot of people, what they do is they order a bulk box, they put an empty box on the shelf, they put like one or two little baggies in it, and then they disappear. <laughs> uh, and it's too much to keep track of. It really is. So the bulk boxes are canceled. We, and what I can do is, I know you paid $14 to get a bulk box. What I can do for you, um, I could offer you $14 store credit, or maybe I can just put some random bulk for you together whenever you ship. You can just say, hey, give me some bulk. Uh, I used to have a bulk box or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So it's, but bulk boxes probably won't make a return. Eveltal, amazing rare. Whew. Kyogre and Eveltal. Yeah, they won't be making a return. They're just such a nuisance. I give my bulb to my nephew. What? Just, oh, your bulk to your nephew. Oh, I get that, yeah. And they probably love it. They probably love it. What do we got? Here's Swampert. So when it comes to bulk, something that could be very easy is if I had like a designated uh, shipping box and then you could order like a brick of bulk for a low price and then I just poof, just ship it out immediately. Uh, but having bulk boxes that sit around and accumulate bulk over time, that was just not working. It was like I had this whole gymnasium of bulk boxes I had to sift through and I had to climb to the top shelf and the bottom shelf and oh where's so and so's box we got ah oh, Umbreon V oh mister there you go oh, that's kind of cold for five packs actually good thing it was Umbreon Umbreon's the most popular it's Umbreon all right beautiful Umbreon V mister that's for Jose Sanchez now, oh, also, Mr. Jose Sanchez, another thing changed on this channel. In the past, you would not keep your hollow cards. Now you do. So you keep all of your holographics, huh? So uh, that's the good stuff from the bulk anyways are the hollows. Every now and then, uh, you, you get a hollow worth grading. So you keep your hollows now, so that part's good. All right, Jose Sanchez. thought I saw your bag just the other day. Yeah, you keep your hollows, and you can donate those if you don't even want them, but now the only remaining bulk would be those unnecessary common uncommons, and they'd be good for, like, giving to, like, a little kid maybe, playing the game with, something like that. There we go. Mr. Jose Sanchez, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Emiliano Orala returns. He says, send my top two cards from my pile to CGC tier one and live ship non-possible 10 cards from my pile and I have four CGC slabs. All right. So Mr. Emiliano, that would be this bag back here. What's up, Emiliano? Have I checked out HGA? I have not. 
So let's see if we've done a pre-grade on you. It looks like we have done a pre-grade. These cards fall behind the pre-grade. Let's see, you got Pokemon Ranger. That's an XY card. That's why we're interested in it. Grapple Locked. I remember your, your bag didn't have a lot in it, so Quagsire doesn't look too good. We just want two cards that look real good. Okay, Grapple Locked. Buzzwolf Flapple. <laughs> The Xerneas, maybe. You'll be surprised. Yeah, we're going to send the Xerneas. So that is also an XY card. And so we're going to send that one, Mr. Emiliano. Eddie Petty, Petty says, yeah, Mr. has a CGC one -zation. That's right. So you're ready for the live shipping. Live ship non-possible 10 cards from the pile. I think I see what you're saying. You're saying you want to keep your bag, but not the uh, not this half of the bag. So let me put Yamper there. Uh, how about these sport cards? Let me get these shipped out to you because PSA is not even open. And I don't know if I'll do uh, I don't know if I'll do cards like sport cards. I guess I could. So here's your bag. We've reduced it in size. Oh, you know what? Let's just get you a fresh new bag. How about that? That'll look much nicer. Other bag looking a little tired. Seen too many wars. You can buy most of the amazing rares for like five to 20 all day and just send them to grade. That's right. But then again, you're never ever going to pull a Charizard if you spend all of your money on the Amazing Rares. And that's how their prices are kind of coming about, right? So it may seem like the more conservative approach to just buy Amazing Rares and send them out, but then you never pull the Pikachu VMAX. Uh, you never pull any of the Hyper Rares, right? Or whatever it is you were pulling from. Maybe you're pulling from like Shiny Fates. Well, you're never going to pull a Charizard VMAX from Shiny Fates. So although those look cheap, you also miss out on the opportunity to pull those other cards when you spend all your capital on already pulled cards. Something to think about. All right. Self-graded amazing rares to make a profit to buy more packs to open. Well, if you're going to do that with amazing rares, why not just go straight to doing it with like... Pikachu VMAX. Why not go straight to doing it with, like, Charizard VMAX? You know what I mean? All right. Take a look at that. Very lovely. Emiliano. Oops. I have super bad luck, says Sergio. I'm sorry. I have okay luck. Over time, if you open a lot of packs, your luck will even out. How much for that Zacian CGC1? Um, well, that's kind of a special card because it has a story attached to it. So I wasn't really going to sell it. I was just going to kind of keep it uh, and talk about it. You know what I mean? The Zacian 1 is part of a story uh, where we had a card get lost and it showed up, and it was totally destroyed, totally crunched. And uh, But I took the card out, and I sent it out to grade anyways. So let me show you. If I can find it. Oh, God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Must be in this last pile. That or I've misplaced it. Not this one. Somebody just sold me this. By the way, if you have PSA slabs with me or, or CGC slabs that returned, you can do something like request store credit for them. Well, shoot. I don't know where it went, man. Should have been in this pile right here. Might be on the other table. Wait, is it down here? Oh, here it is. Ugh. Must have set it down here. Here it is. So the story for this card, once again, 
Uh, Mary had me buy a card for her. She sent me money to buy the card, but it didn't show up for like two months. And I was preparing to basically pay her back that money when the card did show up. And what happened was it had gotten destroyed in the mail. The guy who shipped it, all he put around it was a single bubble mailer. And that's just not enough. So the whole slab, it was PSA graded and the whole thing was destroyed. And what I did was I pulled it out of the broken PSA slab, folded it out nice and flat, and I sent it back out to CGC. Then I got the refund on the order. So I, you know, I applied for a refund and I got it because, well, because I deserved it. So, and instead of throwing away the, the brokenization, I regraded him. So I don't, I don't really feel like he's worth anything other than the fun story attached to him and the cost of the grading. Um, but that is a destroyedization and he's a modern card. So, yep, there we go. These two returned and they were just fun things, you know what I mean? M Maj Var says, I'll buy it for $20. Well, it has kind of nostalgia value to me and I don't want to sell it for $20. All right, let me go ahead and refresh that music. What were we doing? Oh, we were helping Mr. Emiliano. He said he had four slabs. Sounds good. Let's get you a label made. Same address, Mr. Emiliano. Okay, right on the label. Slabs. Sweet. What are the CGC 5 and 4.5? Uh, that's going to be a Team Rocket Charmander and a Team Rocket Dratini from the Rocket Collection from uh, the year 2000. Some of my favorite cards of all time, mister. Okay, Mr. Emiliano, I've got you set aside. Your label's already printed. I just got to box you up. Yeah, that's so cool. I got the refund on this card, and then I got it graded anyways. It's funny. Look at this. Centering 8.5. <laughs> One on everything else. <laughs> they must have gotten a kick out of grading that, huh? Weird. <laughs> so, next up, we've got... It's Miss GMAC. She wants 10 Evos. Wow. Okay, you got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see. Time to pull you a cherry zard. All right. Good luck, G Mac. It's a big order, by the way, guys. How did corners get a one? Well, because they were all smushed up, I guess. I don't know. I predict Starmies. <laughs> Sleep. Sleep. Actually, you know, with the centering being an 8.5... If you add 8.5 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, you end up with, what is that, 11? And then 11 divided by 4 is actually closer to a 2 than it is to a 1. So how did it end up with a 1 as it's great? It should have ended up with an average of a 2. Hmm. Sounds like the centering might be taken as a different... Uh, it sounds like they might not get the grade by averaging out the numbers. Because that would be higher than a 1 at that point. Polywag. We got a perfectly centered Polywag. I hope you pull the Charizard, Miss GMAC, because you're going to get a nice one, I think, if you do. All right, pack number two. We got Polyrath. All right, our man Polyrath. He's all over the place. Hey, now you just need the Poliwhirl, actually. Here's Coughing. All right, we got Coughing. He's thin on the bottom. 
And, oh man, I thought that was gonna be Charizard behind it. Caterpie, Caterpie gang, unite. Onyx, ooh, and Onyx is looking well-centered. There's Mega Venusaur, all right. Mega Venusaur and Darkness Energy. Okay. Next pack. It is Poliwhirl. You got all three of them. You got Poliswag, Poliwhirl, and Poliwrath. Ooh, Machamp. Look at that Machamp. Very nice. Here's Kakuna. And last pack. Come on, Charizard. Growlithe and Slowbro. Darn it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not deep enough, maybe. Let's go through and find any other hot pools. Well, and you know, uh, Miss GMAC, I don't mind saving your I don't mind saving your bulk for you. So let me just look for the secret rares. So I was saying, some people actually do buy pretty consistently, and I don't mind them having a bulk box. I think that's just going to be a complimentary thing that I offer. Surfing Pikachu. All right, that is a hit. Come on, Secret Rares. All right, that's the only Secret Rare, but that's okay. One in ten, that's not bad. Man, I was reading about Elvis Presley today, kind of random, but that dude got fat. He was eating so much junk food. I was reading about some of the stuff he was eating, and I mean, I'm not like in super good shape myself, but I was, I don't eat like Elvis Presley does, holy. You guys, were you guys reading at all about what Elvis Presley was eating? You should look it up, it's insane. That guy was eating like a machine. How much of the EVs here sold, mister? Ah, uh, so much EVs heroes. There, are, there is a sealed box left, though, if that's what you're wondering. All right, so this is for GMAC. There is a sealed box left, if that's what you're wondering. I know, right? It's amazing he's even still alive. <laughs> All right, and uh, does GMAC need a new bag? I don't remember. I want 10. If, I thought, I think that you don't need a new bag. I thought I saw a little baggie for you in here. We're just going to check Gregory Mountford, Isaiah, Gabriel, GMAC. Yes, you do. You got a little bag here. All right. I like this Growlithe. Mr. do you think Trump going to be reinstated? Oh, no. I do not think he will be reinstated. I mean, unless there's like some shocking, crazy evidence that proves that there was cheating during the election, uh, which if that happens, the country is going to go into a meltdown for a while because nobody's going to trust anything. Nobody will trust what anyone says at all. Everyone's going to believe the other team is lying and it will be extremely bad. So I <laughs> reinstated, maybe after a war. No, I don't think that'll happen because the left and the right are so diametrically opposed to each other right now. Yeah, I, I just couldn't see the left accepting any evidence that there was fraud dur during the election. Even if some kind of hard evidence came out, which I'm not saying there will. I'm just saying that the left definitely won't believe it. They'll be like, that's fabricated. And uh, <laughs> no, I don't think that happened. All right, let's see. Juan Sanchez, he says, give me a Rebel Clash and a hit. And let me know if I can send you pictures instead of having to ship uh, for the pre-grade. Um, I mean, you could. If you want to send a few pictures of your favorite cards, I could just give you my impression. Let's see. Rebel Clash. You know, maybe if there was some, like some real hard evidence that came out and it was like just straight up obvious that somebody cheated like video evidence some crazy right something that nobody could deny maybe that's like a pipe dream in my opinion because i think even if that evidence did arrive 
there would still be complete denial on the left. It would be like, no, that was fabricated. That's not true. You're trying to steal the election. It just wouldn't happen, in my opinion. So, Mr. Sanchez, where did we put you? Did we put you up top? We put you up top, did we? Okay, let's take you down here. Garcia. Oh, here we are, Mr. Juan Sanchez. The tampered thrown out stuff in Arizona could be a start. Yeah, I've, I hear they're finding stuff in Arizona. I don't actually know. I haven't looked too heavily into it because I'm not expecting anything substantial to uh, surface. But I, I keep hearing they want to double down on looking into that stuff. Can you have a picture of Kitty? You sure can. Oh, man. <laughs> After Biden starts a war and gets a lot of people killed, people will want Trump back. Arizona reversed. He's still way behind in the states. Spanks have cold packs. All right. Spankies. Spankies have cold packs. Dude, this refresh is taking a long time. Nothing will ever be done about it. We just have to accept the fact. Why did Biden start a war on? Oh, who did Biden start a war on? A war on drugs, mister. He's smoking too much pot. A war on ice cream flavors. Chocolate, chocolate chip. <laughs> Let's see. So, next up, we've got Ricardo Marquez. He wants the Aerodactyl and the Mewtwo. Oh, you got it, mister. Oh, they're right here. Okay, cool. Chocolate, chocolate chip. Biden supplied Palestine with monies. Did he really? Sonic Gamer Power. Tax season must be crazy for you. It is crazy for me. There you go, mister. Next up, we got Jose Sanchez, who says, Mr. Let me get one of those XY evolutions with the $14 credit. $14 credit. Oh, I know what you're talking about. You got it. <laughs> you're talking about just now. We, we just talked about that. Okay. Nidoran. Well, at least it's a really well-centered Nidoran. That could be a Nidoran 10. Just check these other cards real fast. All right, no other noticeable bulk. Thank you so much, Mr. Sanchez. Get that Nidoran graded. Cancel TCC. Cancel TCC. What's up, Gage Stewart? How's it going, man? He didn't need Nidoran. He needed a Zard. <laughs> That's true. Mister, didn't Biden basically shut down the oil industry and then because the country needed money, he opened it up again? Did he? I don't know. Next up, we got Alex PSX, who wants one XY Evolutions. You got it, Mr. Alex. Alex, do you have a bag? I feel like you definitely do. You pull Electabuzz also... This lovely looking Zapdos. Let's take a quick look at the Zapdos. Oh man, that looks clean as heck, dude. You ready? Let's do them. Not seeing a print line at all. Clean on the back. I think that could be a Zapdos 10. How nice is that? And people say you don't pull 10s out of Evos. Well, you pull 10s out of my Evos because we get the good stuff. Look at this Electabo. Oh, here, let me zoom out. We get the good stuff, don't we? He looks okay. He might be a little fatter on this side slightly. Not too much, actually. He might get a 10, too. All right, cool. That's for Alex PSX. Uh, Alex, are you up top? I want to apologize for voting for Biden. Trump is a lot of things, but he always put American people first and made sure we stayed out of conflict and made money. Hey, I care a lot about low taxes and making lots of money. 
And I, I know all this other stuff, all of the sort of like extra stuff, you know, like, oh, your stance on abortion, oh, your stance on social issues. I know those are important to people, but at the end of the day, if you can go home with a bigger paycheck and live a better life, like moving where you want to move in life, honestly, I think that's more detrimental to your health than anything else. You know, can you afford to go live uh, in the house that you want to live, in the place you want to live? That's a lot more important than thinking you've won some ideological war uh, from some, some political podium, if you think about it. So I always ask myself, who's trying to take my money and how can I stop them? That's what I ask when it comes to voting. I don't like giving my money to the government because I don't trust that they'll do the right thing with it. Next up, we've got Adam Vinzen. Adam says, one Japanese team up. You got it. One team up and one Silver Lance. Here it is. Ooh. Let's get these sneaked. Sneep. Low taxes. And you've got Iskalarian Rapidash. Mister, you pay taxes no matter who's in office. That's true. Uh, but I prefer to have the person in office who is going to keep my buying power high and my taxes low. It's the American way. It's a little bit true, actually. Americans have paid lower taxes than people in other parts of the world for a very long time. And so it is not really a big accident that the United States is so excessively wealthy with so many successful businesses and brands. You know, uh, just start naming them. Google, Apple, Facebook, uh, eBay, Amazon, uh, Oracle, many game companies. Uh, what else was made here? There's there's so many major companies that are right here in the United States. Uh, AOL, I guess. AOL was a big part of the development of the internet, wasn't it? Uh, Yahoo, which used to be a big giant, but isn't that so much anymore. Uh, all these companies were made right here in the United States. And I feel like that's not an accident at all. This is a great place to do business. And if you really change that, We've never seen what the world will look like when doing business in America is basically the same as doing business in, let's say, Europe. Maybe America stagnates. Maybe it doesn't grow as much anymore. You have to wonder what percentage of people decide, I'm coming here to America for the low taxes and the high opportunity and the great work uh, business environment. And then how many of them will say, you know what, I'm staying in my hometown because I like living near my parents and my friends and I'm going to start my business over here because why would I move to America? It's basically the same uh, tax rate and the same buying power over there than it is over here. I have no reason to move. You see what I'm saying? So for a long time, America has been able to, Mr. The taxes in America aren't even that low anymore. I know. That's why I'm trying to say hey, that's the problem. Adam Vincent says, can Jack Gray have the pony? I believe he can. Jack Gray. I think we just shipped Jack Gray, so we're going to go ahead and create a new baggie for him. Give my friend Jack Gray the pony. Okay. So, yeah, uh, taxes in America, they are still lower, though. Like, uh, my wife and I, we were comparing uh, the taxes in America to the taxes in the UK because that's one of the main places we would like to move is the UK. However, their taxes are really high. And people go, oh, it's the free health care. Oh, it's the free education. But I don't want to pay for other people's education. And to a, le excuse me, to a lesser degree, I don't want to pay for other people's health care. I, I think we should subsidize some health care. I think it should be primarily subsidized for people of working age. And then once you get too old to work, you need to have your own savings and, and start taking care of yourself. And so if you're like, you've finished life and you're wealthy, you need to dip into your own savings to pay for your health care. Uh, and if you're not wealthy, maybe we'll still have some sort of social net that's still helping you. You see what I'm saying? But uh, kids especially should have some sort of socialized health care, in my opinion, because it doesn't even cost that much. Let's see. Mr. Tor uh, Miss Toro Teal says three more Evos for the road. You got it. I ended up not wanting to move to the UK because I saw the tax rate and I said, holy more taxes than ever. Snip. All right, here goes. In the UK, we pay too much income tax and national insurance. Brock's Grit and Mega Slowbro. 
Well, and there's all kinds of downsides to having such a large welfare net. It makes people want to uh, sort of jump on that welfare net, you know. Uh, I think one of the really interesting concepts between the left and the right is the idea of how much you're responsible for providing for yourself. And the left is constantly pulling one way. They're constantly saying the society is responsible for taking care of you. And the right goes the other way. They say you're responsible for taking care of you. And, uh, and each side uses all kinds of arguments as to why it should be one way or another. But I, I really agree with the, the right that it's better when everyone's sort of forced to work hard, everyone's forced to compete, everyone's forced to provide something of use to the society. Uh, and I do believe if you didn't have to do that, you would end up sort of just bleaching off of the system. And, you know, it in, inevitably, socialism doesn't work when you run out of money. And the reason socialism works so well right now is because uh, really it's a sign that capitalism has been working so well. You get so much surplus from capitalism that you can afford the source socialism. So if you ever really did put a damper on how much surplus you were creating, uh, how would you pay for the increasingly larger number of people that are taking more money uh, to basically give nothing back to the society that they're taking from? You know what I mean? There's There must be a tipping point where you undergo this sort of like, all right, we're out of money and everyone wants all the money. Uh, what do we do now? You know what I mean? What do we do now? We're broke. And uh, I think that's when you start seeing all kinds of inflation and people start leaving the sinking boat. They're like, I'm out of here. I'm going to the next country. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, why are people leaving their countries to move into the UK? They're moving into the United States. Why are people doing that? Well, because their country's not doing so hot. Uh, but then why would we change the way that you become wealthy in our country when there's too many, you know, if you develop a large underclass and they can't afford their stuff, they say, all right, well, let's become a socialist country. But wait a second. The reason this country was so nice in the first place is because we weren't like that. So you're going to change it to be another way. And eventually you're going to overload the amount of safety net that we can afford. And uh, the toughest part is we got people in the United States right now all over California, in fact who can't afford housing, they can't afford hospital bills, and then they just die on the street in some tent. Uh, how It shows you that there, there has to be enough money. And where are you going to get all this money from? Well, not from the socialists. The socialists, they don't develop huge capitalistic corporations. They just take money from those corporations. And then those corporations say, I'm moving to China. That's what they say. I say, I'm out of here. You guys are squeezing me. So you see all these businesses leaving California right now, moving into Texas. And I don't know where they're going to make up all that money that they lost from the huge number of businesses that have already moved. But inevitably, you're going to see the same problem occur in Texas. Texas is going to be like, wait a second, we're so wealthy. There should definitely be this huge welfare net. We should be a big welfare state. And eventually the welfare state will get so large that the welfare state will once again kind of create all this homelessness and businesses will start to move out. Every time you develop too much social uh, giving away, it seems like that doesn't work too well. You, you usually have at least stagnation. Stagnation is when uh, the people in your country don't have the same level of mobility that they would have in another country where you can go from being poor to wealthy very fast you'll be just kind of stuck wherever it is you were born, you know, and that's the sort of stagnation in your country. And I'm willing to bet some people listening to this know exactly what I'm talking about. When you have to pay so much taxes that you can't become wealthy like the wealthy, you just never catch up. They're just always ahead of you. Uh, and the idea that they're paying for like your health care and your, your school, and that's going to make you is so wrong. The reason that American students are so indebted and they can't escape the debt that is the evidence that the uh, degrees are not actually good investment. Not all of them. Uh, some of them are, but clearly there's a problem where we're spending all this money on basically useless degrees and not very good information on how to get wealthy. And honestly, you get wealthy by being able to start a, a low tax business. That's how you get wealthy, guys. You don't get wealthy going to school and then working some middle manager job for 30 years. You just... It's all about buying power relative to the people who are uh, doing smarter things in the society. You're always going to be a step behind them. So even if you start to earn more money, you're not going to feel rich because the prices of housing will go up. All right. Well, anyways, Toro Teal, let's go ahead and get a refresh.
I was thinking about this yesterday and I completely agree. If I had to pay for my graphic design degree, I'd probably go with a subsidized course that is more useful. You know, Toratiel, that's exactly what my wife says. So she works for a company that hires software engineers all the time. And she is a senior software engineer there. And she sees people with no degree uh, they get hired all the time as long as they can prove that they have the skill. And this kills her because she realizes she didn't have to go to school for four years and that she she way overpaid for the education. She's like, all I had to know was the fundamentals and then, you know, start applying everywhere and start doing projects and show that to the people. So, and, and that's not, again, that's not true for every sort of skill. Like there's, there's rules for being a lawyer. There's rules for being a doctor. But what if you just want to be a graphic design artist? Do you got to have a fancy four-year college degree? Well, maybe you're just spending four years being babysat in college, learning a little bit of graphic design, and then learning like social studies or Shakespeare or something like that, history. All the stuff you can learn on your own time when you're gainfully employed. Let's go ahead and see what's happening next. Hey, mister, are you ever going to post more Monster Hunter? Mr. Raymond... I'm going to post all the Monster Hunters starting tomorrow, mister. Si Simon says they're devaluing our money so they can switch to a cashless society. Technocratic communism is on the way. <laughs> you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. <laughs> all right, let's see. Next up, we got Alex PSX who says, One XY Zared snipe kiss it. You want me to kiss it? All right, I'll do it. Here it goes. Smooch. All right, let's see. But I think the wildest thing is in America, all this student debt that the students aren't paying back, how is anyone not realizing that that is the clearest sign that those degrees are not worth as much as you paid for them? So the idea that we should definitely just pay for them all uh, how does anyone reach that conclusion? It's almost like they're really bad with money. You know what I mean? Okay, here's all these degrees. Buy them. They're so good for you. Wait a second. There's no jobs and they don't pay that much. And I've got a $40,000 debt. Guess everyone else should have to, you know, they're like rushing to become socialists. Yeah, the Marxists were right. Karl Marx, woo! You know, because they're sitting on a $50,000, $70,000 school loan debt. They're like, oh, screw the system. I'm not going to be a capitalist pig. But they're only feeling that way because they went to school, pulled out this huge nasty loan for, you know, some like gender studies degree, and then they couldn't get a job. And I don't know, maybe now they're on unemployment or something. Maybe they were like a barista, and then they got fired from their job because of COVID. And you see what I'm saying? So it's, the whole system is so not good right now. We have different points of views on the system. Mr. Alex, we have different solutions for a seemingly similar problem. The way I see it is if the school's not providing a good return on the investment, you don't then buy more of those degrees. It makes no sense. You have to find out how to, uh, how to teach kids and, and teenagers how to think clearly about the way money really works. You know what I mean? Like just freaking look at it. These guys with history degrees over here, see how they have no jobs? Do something about it. <laughs> don't, don't expect to get a job on a history degree. You shouldn't be allowed to go $50,000 in debt to pull out a degree that has no future for you. You know what I mean? Like you can, I guess, but not on a loan. Do it with cash. And, and then the next argument is going to be, oh, well, that just benefits the wealthy. The poor don't have cash or something like that. It's like, well, college and high school just teaches you how to be a cog in the machine. What if the price of education is crushing these young, impoverished teens and adults? Are you going to post builds and tips and tricks on the rise? Or is it more Monster Hunter World Viz? Poppy. What's up, Raymond? Uh, I'm going to post a bazillion videos on Monster Hunter Rise. Imagine presidential trading card. What? Let's create a political TC. Gee, pull me that hollow Donald Trump, mister. <laughs> Mr. Mahasvara says, cut a pack of EV heroes. You got it. One pack of EV heroes sliced at Mr. Mahasvara's request. We can actually cut it like this because these packs are much smaller than the uh, English version, right? And it was Sylveon. No, how could you? 
Mister, look how angry Sylveon is. <laughs> That's a really good card, man. <laughs> Angel says, what? <laughs> Next up, we have Nathan Longoria. He says, one round of My Little Pony. All right, and three, Darkness. You're the best. Clop, clop, clop. Oh, man. How much did that, does the Shiny Charizard go for? I have a few. One, two, three, four, five. So three darkness as well, huh? Where are the darkness? That's base set. Is this darkness? I think this is darkness. Here we go. The Poke Gods have been fed. That's right. Mr. Nathan Longoria. Yeah, you know, there was something I was thinking a lot about recently, and I want to know. I This is something I don't relate to. All of the trust in the United States government, I really just don't trust them to be either competent or on my side. And maybe this is a personality kind of thing, you know. Maybe if you're on the left and you want the government to be larger and you want there to be more social programs, maybe you trust the government. You feel good about them. But I, I've never felt good about them. I've always been skeptical, doubtful. I would say religion played a big role for me in this. Like, I kind of learned about religions. You got, like, those big Bible preachers on the TV. The Lord's gonna save you. Put the money in the hat. You know what I mean? Those guys, they're like tricksters. And uh, I, I kind of view government in the same light. I think because when I was younger, I did have a trust in, like, large organized religion. And I did have a trust in things like corporations. And I did, I think when I was younger, I did have more of a trust in, in government. But as I got older, I started to see the world as more of sort of like this fundamental competition between warring groups who are trying to obtain power and resources. And these groups are driven by the most power-hungry people there are. They just have an endless desire for stuff, you know what I mean? They're just hungry, hungry like the wolf. And so now I'm more skeptical of them, and I this leads to a lot of my feelings like I don't want to contribute to a big socialized government welfare state because... I don't think others will do as good of a job as I will with my own money. And I don't think the government will make good choices. Nathan, what do we got? Mr. Nathan pulling Nightmare Moon. Oh, clap, clap, clap. Troublemaker. Is that a good one? There you go. We need Kara Nichols. Kara Nichols uh, could tell us if that was a good one. Okay. Alex says, cut it. Can we still order, or is it too late? Well, we're at 200 minutes. Twilight Sparkle, mister. Go ahead and make... Uh, you know what? No, 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 no. Let's wrap up. We're 200 We're two hundred minutes in. I would like to wrap up. My back is hurting a bit, uh, probably from all the sitting I've done today. I was playing some games. I was even riding the uh, Wave Runner. But you know what? You sit down when you ride the Wave Runner, I noticed. So do you, Pokemon, showed Shield Pack? That's right. Oops, forgot to donate to the Chair Fund. The Chair Fund... But yeah, so when I was younger, I definitely trusted more. And then over time, I just kind of learned that you can't trust authority figures. You know, you find out the Catholic Church, there were all these sex abuse scandals. I'm not saying the whole church did it, but, but a, quite a bit more than you thought did. And you find out there's all these government scandals as well. You find out politicians don't really do what they claim they're going to do. Uh, and you find out corporations are polluting everything and ripping people off, or running basically slave shops in other countries. So you just kind of learn over time that all these authority figures that you're told that you must trust and you're told you must listen to them, they're all just sort of, they're like sharks basically. They're not really, they're not really there for you. There's, it's kind of the other way around. They view you as being there for them. And uh, the sooner I realized that, the sooner I became a lot more conservative and a lot of my uh, sort of like, I want to call it democratic idealism sort of melted away into, into more of a realism. Like, no, I don't trust any of these guys. It's got the tell. I hear you. I don't trust these old politicians that are setting their ways. What do you think on term age limits? Maybe that would help. Yeah, it's a good question. People have been calling for term limits for a long time. So, Mr. Nathan, let's find your bag. He's opening up the My Little Ponies, guys. He's ahead of the game. 
Nathan Longoria, not Nathan Lewis. Let's see if we can find you. The skeptic skepticism. It's a healthy, healthy skeptic uh, skepticism. I feel like some bad stuff has to happen to you in life, and then you develop skepticism. You know what I mean? Like, who remembers their first romance, their first boyfriend or girlfriend, and you had nothing but positive regard for relationships and for your partner, and then you broke up, and you're like, oh, wow, the real world is a lot grittier and tough and not so nice and uh, romantic and nice. And I feel like it's exactly the same way with like politics, you know, and maybe this is why young people tend to lean left because they underestimate how bad the authorities can actually be and how untrustworthy and really just looking out for themselves they can be. So I, I would say all that kind of plays a role and I'm only 32, but that was really all I needed was to reach the age of 32. Sonic says my Pokemon cars are fake. No! Mr. You'd love the guy I get my acid from. Authorities like cops. They're dirty. Dirty cops. Mr. would crush the lean heart with his stepsis powers. Step, bro. All right. I refreshed, and whatever these orders are, are going to be the very last orders of the night. So, we have one order from Mr. Alex PSX. He says, one more XY just to be safe. You got it, Mr. Alex. This is the last pack for Alex. And then we got one order for Kara Nichols. You ready? Here goes. Full picks. Hyper, or not hyper rare. Reverse hollow Vulpix. No Charizard snipe at all, in fact. You also pick up a nice little non hollow Pee Pee Chew. Hey, Alex, I'm going to open up one more for me. You ready? Oops. Watch this, guys. So that was Alex. Alex, you should have bought two. <laughs> no, I got nine tails. All right, well, we both lose. I'll go ahead and put this up here. <laughs> I thought it would be funny if I got like a big hit. <laughs> Derp. <laughs> okay, so Mr. Alex, let's put this into your bag. And Kara Nichols says, one vivid. You got it. One vivid for Kara. And this is the last order. Thank you, Kara Nichols. Let's see what you get. Oh, how do you get so lucky? You pick up Memory Capsule Ultra Rare. Well, it's not the best pull ever, but you pulled it in a single pack. Very lucky. Okay, let's find Kara Nichols' bag. There we go. Just be careful if your luck dries up, okay? What's the saying? Quit while you're ahead. All right. What a nice live stream we went through again. That NFL box was actually really fun. It was pretty wild seeing how people were reacting to some of those uh, pulls. And apparently we pulled two really good ones. So I thought that was well received. We have another box like that. And I have a feeling it will sell fairly well. It's still pretty pricey to get into it, so and, and not everyone got a hot pack. So, uh, But, you know, if we ever do an NFL box again, we'll probably have an NFL custom pack as well to get people into that box on a chance. Can I see my bag? Oh, here it is. It's right here. You saw it. No, just kidding. So you got this guy. He's really nice. Uh, your Hound Doom's really nice. And your Flannery's really nice. This guy's okay. So you got three really nice cards right here. There you go. You know, Kara Nichols, you really didn't open a lot of packs to pull those three. So you've gotten very lucky on this channel. That's the end. If you guys haven't hit the subscribe button, maybe you'll consider doing that for me. I'm going to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.